Welcome back, everyone, to the For the Grand podcast. Super excited. We got a special um, episode tonight. Joining me, as usual, is Dom. I mean, joining. Oh, okay. That's fine. <laughs> Why are you going to say joining, joining me? In the intro. And you were going to go right to Jeff. <laughs> oh, yeah. You just ruined that. And it's like, I'm not even stuff. here. <laughs> so now that you've all heard, he is here, as usual, Dom. But more important than Dom, it's not a, uh, a guest for us. You are a host today. A host? Okay? A special host. And what makes it even more special is you are actually the For the Grand podcast first ever repeat guest host. So welcome Jeff Mack from Jeff Mack Designs. How are you, sir? Good, good. It's been uh, well a few years now since the last episode, but it's, uh, yeah, it's been busy. Yeah, how are you guys? I can see that it's been very busy. In fact, I think the last time we were here, um, where we are sitting now, currently in your studio, was this the woodworking part of it, or yeah? So this was still the woodworking area, but we've since kind of opened up the back shop, and we added thirty five hundred square feet of warehouse for the online store. Just thirty five hundred. <laughs> this guy's his own mall. He's... <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome, man. But thanks for uh, hosting tonight and yeah. for joining us, man. Yeah. You're, uh, you're obviously a, um, a force to be reckoned with on social media in the woodworking business. And most recently, we'll get more into it, but on YouTube, because yeah. a lot of people nowadays when they, you know, their Instagram is struggling, everyone thinks, suddenly I'll just make the quick flip over to YouTube and think that they're going to... Not as easy as people think. Exactly. And you're going to tell us all about that. But um, before we get into that... Um, Dom, what's going on? How are you? You know what? I was just thinking we should have, because Jeff is our first ever repeat guest, we should have had some sort of a plaque or something ready for him to commemorate. You you have a CNC now. Why didn't you make a plaque for the guy? <laughs> I, I do have a CNC. And then after I looked over to my right here and I saw that this guy has a CNC the size of a hockey rink. What am I going to make for you with my CNC at home? That's like 12 have, inches like, by 12 like inches. Like when we presented him with the Rosolium road trip plaque <laughs> that he promptly <laughs> threw into the trash yeah. bin. <laughs> Where, where's that sign, actually? I was going to ask you, can I see that? Uh... It's, uh, oh, it's over there. Holding up the trash. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's probably flowing around somewhere. Just um, buried. To give context to our listeners, we started out the Rustoleum road trip in 2019. Yep. So the first time ever Dom, Mark, and myself went to Atlanta with a little visit to your shop. It was four years ago this weekend. This weekend. Yeah, You're right. Yeah. Yeah. And Actually, Jeff, like, what a good sport. He was here at. 4.30 a.m. Yeah. To, to let us in because it was our, our first stop. Yeah, it was our first stop on the road trip. We stopped at a bunch of makers' shops and obviously reached out to uh, Jeff, our buddy. We're from the same hometown. We all have the same common bond of woodworking, social media, Instagram, and all that. And, uh, yeah, he let us in here at 4.30 a.m. That was awesome, man. But ever since then, going back to... So where we're sitting now is your shop. Yeah. But before, out there, we're... Um, people listening can't, you know, see this, but I'm pointing to another room kind of off behind you there. What happened here? Like, you used to be retail, but people are not used... There's a sign out that says, that says no one is allowed in here. I hate <laughs> yeah. people. But So we... <laughs> it says I hate people, but that was in small writing. But we like that. our customers. But we love customers. That's um, it, so. Yeah, so we, we had a retail space where people could come by, come in and buy, you know, wood, epoxy, and, and all the supplies. And then when COVID hit, we were oh, forced okay. to shut down, um, which it was a tough decision to, you know, kind of follow the rules and actually lock our doors. And, and, but then we made a huge shift and we made a big focus online, like bigger shift than we already were spending online. And the online store took off like crazy because everyone was kind of forced to buy online and there was all that extra money in the economy. So we, the pandemic was kind of the best thing to ever happen to the business, yeah. uh, luckily. Not, that's not the case for everybody, but you know we were in a very lucky spot with, we already had the online store going, we already built some presence there. Yeah. Um, you capitalized on a pretty crappy tur situation. Turned the negative into a, yeah. a, a big positive. I, I think it worked out well because now suddenly you had this whole segment of the population that wasn't at their regular nine to five job and was looking for something to do to keep them busy. Yeah, trying to find a hobby. Right? Exactly, and, yeah. So yeah. yeah, we definitely capitalized on that. We came up with like, a social media plan. I, I got together with Andrea and Sanya, who both work in the office, and they were both helping run some of the accounts. And we we just made a game plan of like, okay, we're gonna post three times a day. We're gonna do X amount of stories. We're gonna promote our top, you know, 10% of items just to 
I was worried about keeping the lights on. Like I was yeah, terrified yeah, and I yeah. just bought a house with my wife, uh, like just before the pandemic started that needed to be renoed. And I was like, do we skip the reno and live in it the way it was? Mm -hmm. And like, it was a stressful Is time. Is that why so. you're charging us $10,000 tonight just to be here? Uh, it's 12 actually. Oh, it's 12. We you guys didn't see that? that? The price, the price went up. The price went up yeah. <laughs> since last week. Inflation. So but you mentioned yeah. Andrea and Sammy. Sanya. Sanya. Sorry. Yep. So in terms of employees, those are they work for you now for the Jeff Mac? Yeah. So Andrea is kind of my my right hand person in the office. She does a little bit of everything from accounting to you know writing checks to collecting money, payroll, helping out in shipping, like across the board. She does does everything. How many? If you if you don't mind. You know, I, I know before this episode, we talked a little bit. We're yeah. pretty, um, we don't hide much on this podcast. Yeah, so no, I'm, I'm an open book. If so. there's anything you don't want me to ask, like you have to kick me hard in my knees. Right and in the shin. I, yeah, right in the shin. Yeah. But how many employees do you have now? Right now we have four, five in the office. So four plus me. And then we have two in the shop and one in the warehouse. So uh, eight employees, wow. including myself. That's crazy. Yeah. How many employees do you have? I have one, me. Right. But that's a good employee. Yeah. That's a wow. good employee. When you have one good employee, you don't need the rest. And I wasn't cutting it, so. Yeah, no, that's awesome, man. Yeah, you've done, you've done, um, you know, I, I don't want to, we're pretty early in this episode for me to start crying, but I'm very proud of you, man. Thanks. Like you've done, you've done well, right? Um, and most recently, we'll get, like I keep saying, we'll get more into this because I think nowadays a lot of people's interest is um, social media related to grow the business, right? Yeah. And which is what you've been doing for years, but in terms of YouTube, yeah. um, you know, I watch your videos, but I never really check the home page of most people. So I didn't right. realize how, because I remember the day you started your, your YouTube or, mm -hmm. or, or using your Instagram to push your YouTube, right? Yeah, because, try to get that rush of followers or subs at the beginning. Of course. And I remember that, right? So I was like, oh, he's going to start a YouTube and he's probably going to do good at it. But most recently, do you know your subscriber numbers? Like around 190,000? It's at 196 as of this morning. Oh. 196,000 subscribers. So that for some people, never mind the business we're sitting in now, that alone in itself is a business for a lot of people, right? Yeah, there's definitely monetization attached to that. And uh, the, the way we, well, the way we were able to grow the channel is I hired a full-time videographer in okay. November, which Eric, he's here right now. Yeah. Um, Hi, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, it was kind of a leap of faith because the YouTube channel, or the YouTube channel, wasn't making money when he started. I had, what was it, forty thousand, fifty thousand, somewhere in that range, called fifty thousand, <clears throat> and we just we put a huge effort into videos every week. I was religiously posting shorts once a day, okay. like had like a reminder on my phone. Yeah. Post, post, like even if I didn't feel like it, didn't have good content, just get something out there. Really. Eh? And the shorts is what really built the. The audience oh, yeah. um, oh, and that's that's, that's what huge it's what a lot of people are saying that shorts yeah. is the way to to quickly build your what, what you if know, you your wear subscriber jeans? count the jeans work or no, they it has to, to be shorts shorts, okay. shorts only so you have it's to tough in shorts, Canada. Okay. and then your youtube's <laughs> gonna take off all right but no. <laughs> sorry i just want to add to that uh the the shorts it's interesting because i'll post shorts and they'll they'll catch on like sometimes the same day and sometimes it'll be three weeks later and it spikes like it'll yeah. go from it had 2,000 views and it'll spike up to a million Holy, like yeah. two, two months later. There's no rhyme or reason. It just happened to like catch the algorithm the right way. And I think the reason why shorts are such a, uh, there's such like a positive reaction to them right now is there's less content than people consuming it. So the supply and demand, mm. there's more people watching them than what can be put out there. So there's more things going viral. And that's slowly changing as more people are posting to them and they know like, oh, there's some like subs to gather here. And well, as soon as people and... hear you saying that shorts is the way to go, it's, it's <laughs> over with now. now it's yeah, well, I think, I think like anything, it becomes saturated. Like look at reels on Instagram, right? Yeah. At the beginning, it was a oh, great way to grow, right? Yeah, yeah, millions of views on something really stupid. And now I think it's all because of supply and demand. Now everybody's that's, making reels. Yeah. There's a million reels going to, you know, call it a million people. Each person can only watch one. Or, that's you know, right. It's, yeah. su it's all supply and demand where yeah. right now there's, same with TikTok at the beginning. You post yeah. at the beginning, you would crush it. Yeah. And I think YouTube Shorts is the way. Facebook Reels is also fairly new. Um, I've been having a little bit of success. I haven't been focusing on it as much as I should. But... Facebook Reels? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, I didn't even know that exists because all I ever do You don't even my... have a Facebook, well, right? Well, I do have a Facebook. And you know how I know this? Because my friend asked me, this was a while ago, and I think I talked about this in a previous episode where he goes, man, you're really pumping out Facebook stuff. And I go... 
I, I've never posted on Facebook. What are you talking about? But obviously, it's auto share. exactly, yeah. it's on auto share. Well, but see, I don't think you need to have a Facebook account. Well, to auto well, you share. You have to have a Facebook account to op to make your Instagram a business. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's, yes. that's the Facebook that I have. But oh, every okay. video on yeah. there will but be just. A, when you post a reel, you have an option to make it available. On, that's right, and on I always Facebook. do. Which, whether you have an account or not, that's like a freebie yeah. where they just, I exactly. think they wanted to get reels into their system yeah. to then launch reels. So when you say Facebook reels is doing okay these days, that's like you would go into Facebook to make this reel? Correct. Not just a recycled Instagram. You, you can recycle Instagram, which I, I do some of the time. Like I'll reuse videos yeah. obviously across platform because they're kind of equally as valuable. Um, but I will we'll normally post on, like go into Facebook and post a reel uh -huh. di directly in there and not share it because I found the sharing ones didn't do as well. Uh -huh. and you're better off okay. to organically post it. Have you ever done that? You ever never, never directly in Facebook. No, no, just shared through Instagram. That's where my, uh, remember my infamous deck video we've referred to many times yeah. and I went and it was like 30 million views, Yeah, but like 26 of yeah. them were from Facebook views. Yeah. I've right? had that and happen that to a me lot. Was like, what I've heck? noticed a lot of times on Instagram when a reel does happen to pop off like a week later, it's because it's of usually be if you go into your insights, it's because it's popped off on yeah. Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's huge. Which man. So, it, it's, I, you know what? With that Facebook and sharing it there, I find the value of it limited because I don't think that most people they'll watch it on Facebook and it's great. Your your reel will now have an extra million views, but I think it's really hard to get people to click through to Instagram and follow yeah. you from oh, it. Or go to a to website. Go. It's more so yeah. just like you're getting in front of an eye and if somebody's really serious yeah. and really want to be a customer, they'll find it. They'll figure yeah. it out. Yeah. Has your name in the title. Like, yeah, It exactly. is some good brand recognition. I think getting people to go, and this is going back to when we first started social media, getting people to go off platform to another platform yeah. is impossible. Like, and not impossible, but it's not that easy. Yeah. Um, for example, I'm watching a, uh, um, what's her name? Sadly, I forget her name right now, but I'm watching um, someone's stories that I watch, you know, every couple of days or every day. And she, she just started her TikTok channel. I forget who it is, it? Alicia maybe? Anyways, and in her story, it's like, you know, come sign up for my TikTok, you know, the stuff like trying to help yeah. herself out, which yeah. is cool, which is cool. But she didn't put the, the link, right? Right. So I message her on the side. I go, Hey, just, I don't know if you did this on purpose or not, but I'll tell you right now, no one's leaving yeah. to go to TikTok to search. to search your name. Too many obstacles. So I go just at least add the link. And of course she's like, I'm still, oh, I'm, I didn't I know. Forgot. She's just not savvy. No, she and... forgot. Right. Like she's oh, just okay. like, I should have done that. And then she took it down, posted it with the link. And I go, the, the whole point of me saying this is it's a lot easier when you make it easy for people, yeah, right? Yeah. Like you would know with your, with your, I was going to ask you actually about your Jeff Max supply. Yeah. Um, Cause that's a whole, like you have your Jeff Mac Designs website yeah. or your Jeff Mac Designs social media presence. Yeah. How did that translate to saying, you know what? I'm not busy enough that now I need a whole <laughs> separate website also. So how that started was, uh, where to start the story? <laughs> it's, it goes a little ways back. So it started, we were making tables every day. Hey, where'd you get the oil finish? Where'd you get the epoxy? Oh, where'd okay. you get this? And I was sending people to all these other websites and oh, it was kind okay. of bothering me because I'm like, I should... I, like I have enough customers now that want this stuff. I should monetize. Like I should, yeah. yeah, I should build my own website. And I actually almost went into business with another local maker. Uh, his dad has a, had a, a building like the space and some investment money to put into it. And he had time and I had the social presence. We were going to put all that together. Um, and then after kind of doing some due diligence, it, we didn't end up doing that because I realized what I was bringing to the table was sort of the most valuable and like, more, yeah. like for them to replace me, it was going to be way harder for than me to replace them. Cause yeah. like I could hire an employee. We had a room here to add another 3,500 square feet. So we, we did that. We added 3,500 square feet, hired a couple more employees and just took a chance. It was a big risk. Cause you know, there's a lot of expenses there. And yeah, but yeah, started the online store. And when we first started, like we were selling eco epoxy and hats over email. And that, this was like, I'm not talking like 1990. I'm talking, yeah, yeah this yeah. is you know, last 2000, yeah. 2000, uh, 2018, yeah. early 2018. So, uh, so hold on. If someone wanted eco epoxy or a hat, 
there's no, there was no like click here to add to your cart. No, there wasn't even a listing on the website. I would say, send me your email and I'll send you the price even list. Even Dom's yeah. website is, is, is oh, more it advanced was than not, that, isn't it? Well, maybe not in 2018. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But yeah, even I'm, 2018, that's yeah. not like, like I yeah. should have had no, a website. Not, but, it, yeah. but I was like, just get something going so people know they can buy from us. So we started. Yeah. And then, you know, we were getting tons of orders. We were making like a bunch of money off of email order epoxy back in 2018. That makes no sense. Like yeah. we should never have even done that. Yeah. But it worked, and then you know, then I had enough sort of time and and know how to build the online store, so I built that all myself. And then I think like within the the first week of the store, we we were selling Ecopoxy, some hats. Uh, I think we had Rubio because we had it in our retail space, and some pigments. I think that was it. It was a very basic offering. Um, where now we have I think over over seven hundred SKUs, give or take. Wow. Wow. Eh? So like every 699. week. I actually took a few hats when I went into your <laughs> shop earlier. But you said take whatever so, you want, right? So. so yeah, we were able to, to build the online business and we, we just kept adding products like every week over the course of five years. Well, yeah, five years now or coming up on five years. Yeah. Uh, so it's a slow build. You can't do it all in one night because it takes yeah. hours yeah. and hours and days to, to create the listings, take the photos, make the description. Yeah post it and then you know it, it's got to live in the warehouse somewhere it's all the product we sell is in our building yeah and what um, about temp like those are all things that people that don't live where we live have mm -hmm. to think about but even myself in my tiny little shop like i don't leave glue out i don't leave stain you know anything that's like yeah. temperature now here yeah. you are with a 3500 square foot warehouse. yeah we got to keep it heated you, you know enough yeah. to keep everything going and we don't have ac out there but luckily it doesn't get well, it gets hot out there, but not, not crazy. Not enough to the ruin summer. the product. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Another thing that I think that you did that, that's great, that really separates the, you know, the Jeff Max from, you know, everyone else. From the Dick and Dawn. You, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It, you went and introduced, you know, your beaver dust pigments and yeah. uh, your own line of, of epoxy molds. And, yeah. Uh, you know, and, and went down that. Why, why did you decide to do that as opposed to, you know, bringing in... So we were, we were selling other brands uh, of forms and pigments, and they were good companies, fine products. There's, I'm not you know, bashing the products by any means, but I... Oh, you wanted to cut out the middleman, straight up. Essentially. <laughs> yeah. um, but no, I, I learned about like, what their margins are if I was to buy direct, and, and I, had, I was in a position to order pigments, and like the minimum order, or like the initial order, we brought in like 78 colors, it was $80,000 US. Yeah. Yeah. So $80,000 I had to put out and then wait a couple months for that order to be fulfilled and, and, you know, delivered. Yeah. So, you know, it was a huge risk. It's, you know, everyone thinks, oh, I'll just do this and do that. And like, there's a lot of risk involved. And, you know, luckily I was in a position to invest that money yeah. into the business. Yeah. And, you know, it took probably two years for it to start to pay for itself, which is kind of now I'm just starting to feel kind of the, the rewards of that risk from two years ago. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just wanted some in-house brands. I thought we could do a few things better than what our competitors were doing. The, for the molds, we actually like re kind of, I don't want to say reinvented, but we came up with a new uh, way to create them. So they're all built out of one piece. Mm -hmm. instead really? Of, eh? That's yeah. what I was going to ask you. Like, so when you're working with all these brands before, we'll, we'll just call them brands without, you've already said a few names, but anyways, you're working with these brands and now you get this idea like, uh, I can make that even yeah. a bit better. Like for people listening that might, want to take that venture how does that even work like do you approach that brand and say hey like where do you get your stuff from yeah like like that's no, to me that's almost like like how do you even start doing that how or do you do start you, that like uh, or do you fully just do that from bottom up first you kind of gotta like the molds for example yeah okay let's so the, the way i kind of started the molds is i knew the material of the molds and i knew some of the fabrication processes just from like looking at them you can kind of tell how they're made uh you know from a rough standpoint. <clears throat> so I would look up companies in the area because all our forms are made in, in the GTA, which okay, is nice, perfect. the greater yeah. Toronto area. Yeah. Saves you shipping and all that. Yeah, yeah, and it supports local and all that. So um, yeah, I just looked up a couple companies that work with the materials that I wanted it to be made out of. And it took a bunch of phone calls, a bunch of knocking on doors. I'd go to one place, be like, hey, I'm trying to make this. Can you do it? And they're like, no, we don't do that. Go away, basically. Yeah. So I'm, all right. Go to the next place on the list and walk in there. Hey, I'm trying to make this. Most of them just shoot you away because you're like one guy with one form. They think you want one more of those. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. Um, then you suddenly say like, I want forty thousand of these, and now they're yeah, knocking like on our, your door. My initial PO that I signed for the forms was seven hundred thousand dollars. 
Holy smokes. I didn't know that up front, but I had to commit to $700,000 worth yeah. of product, uh, which like I'm still working through that work order. Of course. Or yeah. that PO rather. Because yeah. he had to order material and like it's... it's well, they want, to, they want to protect their business. Yeah. The, yeah. yeah. They don't want to just like open up to anybody. So like if you want to get into the form business, I mean, that's not the only way to do it, but that was the most economical way to get like some cheaper material and, you know, get our margins right. And yeah. So yeah, just a lot of like research. Google's your friend, YouTube's your friend, knocking on doors. A lot of people don't want to do that. They'd be yeah. afraid to like, I'll walk in any building anywhere and walk in and ask like, hey, can you make that? Like, I have yeah. no shame. It's what are they going to do? Say no. And then you move on to the yeah. next one. You yeah. walked into Papa yeah, I, John's pizza and asked them. To yeah, make that's right. Can we get a free pizza? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> I think that's a barrier for a lot of people is is, you know, doing those cold calls or just walking into somewhere where you've never been before. A lot of people are afraid of failure or yeah. they're going to be afraid of what that person's going to think about them when you have no knowledge. But when I go in, I, I start by saying like, forgive me for my lack of knowledge, but I'm trying to get this made. Is this something you can do? Just yeah. try to leave it basic. And then hopefully they have a bit of compassion for you knowing like, Hey, I'm not a pro in this, yeah, this yeah. space. This guy's humble enough for me to actually help. Yeah. Him. Like, could, could you at least guide me in the right direction? And I always say that, like, if you can't do it, could you show me somebody that would? And they, yeah. they normally respect that. And they, you know, they're like, yeah, go check this guy. And He's over here. You, yeah. And, you, you know, you work your way through until you get to the guy or the company that can make your stuff. And, and then you work out the details. And... But that's different from your, and the reason I say this is because um, not only are we friends and we go back a while, but I went back and listened to our first podcast when mm -hmm. you were our, our guest. And then not only there, but also some YouTube videos where you were talking about, okay, so I started out in a condo doing this, this, and this. And then when I got an order for 104 tables, right. I went and did this. And then when I got, um, what was the other one? Um, I think it was the Montreal Canadiens yeah, job or that's something. that's how we expanded into this room. And then I now. expanded based <laughs> off that. So for you to take the risk with... Um, whether it's forms it's, or your pigment. It's been a series of risks. <laughs> right, a but those weren't because someone said, Hey, Jeff, I need a um, hundred molds. Can you do that for me? And then you would go and now start your own. Yeah, no, I just started it. So those you kind of. there was demand. I took a shot in the dark yeah. and yeah. if it failed, I don't know what would have happened. <laughs> Probably wouldn't be sitting here, but. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, but you don't live you'd, you'd be outside of your shop with <laughs> exactly. like a, a Looking hat in. upside down. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I'd come by, I'd give you a couple of bucks and I would. Exactly. Get a coffee. Get a um, coffee. Yeah. No, it's a, I've taken a lot of big risks. A lot of people don't realize that. Sometimes they see like some of the success and they're like, Oh, like that was easy. You just posted stuff on Instagram, yeah. but it's like, they don't see the behind the scenes of yeah. the hard work. And you know, there's been failures, but I'm also not afraid to make a failure because, or make a failure. I'm not afraid to fail because, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not afraid to fail because, you know, I, I always have this, this saying like, don't make the same mistake twice. So if I fail at something, that's kind of the first mistake. But then I sort of analyze the situation, learn what I could have done better. And if I try that again, then I will, you know, learn from that first fail and then do it better. And it's just an ongoing, don't make the same mistake twice mentality. Yeah. 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 That, that makes a lot of sense. So Which is something I think a lot of the, the listeners and viewers can take away from, you know, like take chances and don't just don't make the same mistake twice. If you make a mistake, analyze it, figure out what went wrong, how you could have done it differently. And then jump right back in and go for it again. Just don't do that same. If you lose a bit of money, it's not the end of the world. Like you yeah. can make more money. You can't make more time. And if you waste your time waiting to make that decision, you're not getting that time back, but you can get the money yeah. back that you wasted. Yeah. I, I think for any, and I mean, not just in, in what we do, but I think in, you know, any industry, if, if you want to get ahead, I think at some point or another, you're going to have to take some risks Yeah. or you just won't grow. No risk, no reward. Right? Yeah, exactly. And not only I think you have to take risks, you have to do stuff that's outside of your comfort zone, right? Oh, 100%. Even if it's not yeah. the hugest risk, um, you know, you're different than me, you're different than me, you guys are different, everyone's different. But when you get comfortable, I think that's, and there's some saying, which I'm not going to pretend to know, but when you're comfortable doing something, it's time to get uncomfortable oh. like right if you're comfortable if you get a little complacent in your two things yeah, do just, seem too easy you gotta shake things up shake and them up it. a little and maybe, maybe someone out there will listen and go yeah i'm comfortable because i'm doing really well yeah. i'm making this much money and i'm happy all right but someone comes along and before we started recording we're sitting at this beautiful um golf style table and i was telling jeff earlier that someone reached out to me and asked me to hollow out the top of a stump fill it with golf balls and coat it with epoxy, right? Like I did my animal yeah. stump, but they wanted like a golf ball yeah. version. And to this date, he's asked me now twice, and I just, 
I never said no, but I, yeah. I just, in the back of my head, I'm thinking, I'm like, it might make me uncomfortable because I might fail. It's the perfect project. I, it is the perfect <laughs> project. I know, but it, the way I operate is I'd rather do it, and maybe I need, you know, you, someone like you or you to slap me across the face and say, like, you know, take <laughs> it on. But maybe I'm guilty of that, like, where I'm like, I'm comfortable. I think we're all guilty of it to leave, a certain extent. I don't want to try that. I might fail. But, but why that, would you? Why would you feel at that? You that's like right up your alley. I know, I know. I think it just comes down to trying something different. It's, it's basically like, the ammo if stump, I did it, I but with it, golf balls. With golf balls, yeah. But you know, you know me. I'm thinking in my head. I'm like, guaranteed. There's going to be so many bubbles. The golf balls are probably wow. going to crack from the heat. But what if there like, isn't? But what if there isn't? But what if there is? Then you try again. You're at what? A yeah, hundred bucks in epoxy and some Maybe, golf. Like, yeah. who gives a crap? Maybe. Yeah, you need to keep growing, and that's basically like a what key. I'm saying is, can you do me a stump, hollowed out top with golf balls? <laughs> sell it to me for cheap, and then, and then sell it to me for cheap. Yeah, I can put ping pong balls ping in it, <laughs> and it'll be cheaper than golf balls. with little divots. You have to yeah. hit each ping pong ball like a thousand times. No, but that is that's important. This whole episode we're getting to it is is kind of about longevity and yeah. uh, you know staying the course on social media. And I think with Jeff, it's great to have him co-hosting with us this episode because he's a great example of that longevity and, and how you kind of have to evolve. His business is very different today than it was four years ago when we walked in here for that workbench uh, road trip, yeah. right? Oh, absolutely. When, yeah. I, when I started, I was working out of my condo doing AutoCAD design. Yeah. It's a little different. Like, I never sent a piece of wood through a planer. I'd and say now, it's like, different. you know. <laughs> It's, you got to be able to pivot and, and adapt and move forward and take yeah. chances. And that's something that applies to, to every business, not just, you know, woodwork, like any, any industry, you got to pivot and take chances. And, you know, what got you here today isn't going to get you there tomorrow. So you got to be able to try something new, make a golf, golf ball stump. And right, that's it, guys. I'm going to make a golf. I'm starting tonight, tonight when I get home. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to kick my son out of his room because it's going to wake him up. and Find some people that did stuff and ask them questions. The hey, funny thing the is that guy probably bubbles? found like, someone else by now. And probably. He's, he's never gonna, I, I don't even know where his message is in my, uh, my inbox. All right. So, Jeff, you mentioned earlier, you briefly mentioned TikTok, but we didn't really get into details. And then, obviously, we already covered YouTube. But since this is for the Graham podcast... We're going to cover Instagram a little bit, okay? <laughs> Why are you saying it like that? <laughs> saying what? It's not Instagram. It's Instagram. How many syllables is Instagram? Three. Insta. In. <laughs> see? See? That's why, Insta that's why I'm saying it like that, because I speak English properly, okay? <laughs> so we'll focus on Instagram, okay? Yeah. All right. Um, talk to me, man, because I'll be honest. I'm struggling these days. But one thing I noticed about you is briefly earlier, you mentioned, oh, I lost this amount of followers. But you almost said it so positively as if it's like, who cares? I'm still here, still pumping out content every day. That baffles me because a lot of people, including <laughs> myself, I know we and you talk every day, Dom. When you're in a slump, never mind the slump, this is like a neg, like the slump of all slumps where you're losing, not just yeah. not gaining. But you're just like, yeah, yeah, so what? I keep doing videos. and Like, how do you do that, man? <laughs> like, honestly. So I was, I remember this because I was, you know, I was creeping up on 900,000. We were at 892. And I was like, oh, like, you know. Yeah, it's that's kind just of around the corner. Yeah. And I was thinking about it, which I normally don't think too much about the milestones. Like, I thought about, like, 500,000 and maybe 750. But outside of that, I didn't really pay too much attention. Well, a million, I'll be honest. That's a, a million, cool be, milestone. Yeah, man. that yeah. one, I'm, yeah, I mean, feels like I'll never get there now. But yeah. <clears throat> Um, yeah, I was at 890, no, seven, no, 892, 892,000. And then I don't know what happened, but this was probably three, four months ago as we all experienced and it's you're following time. just, That's the same yeah. time we all just yeah. sort of started fizzling and you know, you're, you're getting negative followers each day. So you're, you know, you're gathering a few, but you're losing more. And yeah, it was kind of, at first I was like, oh, is this like some sort of like bot purge? And I'm like, ah, like if they do that, I'll lose a couple thousand, no big deal. Yeah. But I ended up, I'm, I'm down about 13,000 over a few months. 13,000. And, you know, at first I was like, what's going on? And I started thinking about it. But then I was like, you know, the whole reason why we have these accounts is to, to bring attention to our brands and our companies. And if somebody's not into it, why, like, why should they follow you? If somebody doesn't want stumps in your content and doesn't like you, what, yeah. are you going to be upset because they don't follow you? I am. You should. I am going to be upset. You should. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I just thought of it that way. I'm like, well, if they're a customer or like a potential, like 
yeah, potential customer or customer or somebody who cares about it, they'll follow. And if they don't care, they'll not follow. And if I'm doing enough things that are not great and enough people are unfollowing, maybe I switch it up, try a new style. And so I always treat it as like a time to switch things up and try not to think about the number too much because at the end of the day, like even if you're gaining 100 but losing 400, you're still gaining 100 new yeah, eyes. You yeah, gotta focus true. on yeah, that yeah. gain number, right? And those 100 yeah, might be more invested true. in new Yeah, new the 400 eyes, who yeah. left, I don't like, thanks for coming out, but see you later. And you know, focus yeah. on the 100 that are there. Like, why worry about those 400? Worry about yeah. the 100 that are, that are new. And are you listening it, to this? I, I, I think a lot of people because... are, I think a lot of people are just fixated on growth. And it's not so much, yeah, great. Those, you know, 100 people that left, like you said, they don't want to be here. So, you know, let them let go. Them go. But I think a lot of people are worried about the fact that, well, why isn't Instagram pushing me out widely enough to replace those people? Right. Right? I, I think that's the big thing right now. I mean, I, I'm seeing that. I'm, And I can see even from the engagement I get on my posts yeah. that it's just dropped oh, yeah. significantly. The engagement is horrible right now. Yeah. And, and I mean, what are you going to do? You're getting a free platform to use. You're well, getting in front it, of yeah. free eyes. And, you know, like if Instagram fell off tomorrow, they don't really owe me anything. Yeah. They yeah. don't like yeah. I don't pay for the service. Well, here's, it, 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 here's, it here's a really good question for you now that you mentioned the free platform. Will I pay? Yes. Will you pay for this <laughs> meta verified? Straight up, eh? Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. 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 Um, one, they say you get customer service, which I doubt is gonna be yeah. that great because anytime you try to get a hold of anyone at Facebook or the, yeah. Meta, this before you even go on, we we went into I'm gonna put you on blast here. If you haven't listened to our last episode, I haven't. Yet, <laughs> Guilty. You haven't? I have not. Let's go, though. Let's get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's fine. I understand you're, you're, it's not like you're busy or anything, no. but um, throw on that podcast because we did the, and this is kind of like I, a shame. I actually noticed plug. that one and it's, it's on my like list of things to listen to. It's just, is it? I haven't got it's to like it It's like the 17th thing on your list. 37th. 37th right. thing. Okay. Well, at least we're in the top 50 eh? on Jeff Mack's list. <laughs> he's got 36 new products to invent <laughs> yeah. before, before he he's listens got, to He's got 36 podcast. new mold, mold <laughs> shapes and, and, and templates to design. But um, the reason I say that is it's a little bit of a shameless plug is because we did a lot of research for that last episode mm-hmm. because we wanted to get this, get the word out there yeah. on what this meta verified is. And I, at first people think, oh, I'm paying for a check mark. It goes deeper than it's that. It's way beyond that. And it's yeah. way beyond that. There's actually four the services. Mark. I don't even care about the check mark. Yeah. Right? The check mark, especially now that you know you can buy it, it's yeah, not it, going to be it as valuable. It's meaning. It's, it's the, the it's other the secondary stuff. things that... Yeah that is important. Yeah. And, and one of those, I think that's why Dom brought it up is because um, it, why is Instagram not pushing my stuff out? You don't think, and this is, we didn't talk about this in the last episode, but I honestly think Instagram is smart enough to know. And when I say Instagram meta, right? Because mm, it's all the same. Whole. I think they're smart enough to, this isn't just a quick plan for them. This is like a, a whole years long plan where they're like, oh. all right, we're going to slam all of our accounts, especially the ones that are over 100K. Yeah. Make to them the all point feel where a bit of pain. Yeah. make them all be like, all right, we're not going to do it long enough. Like we're not going to do it for two years where they all just quit. Yeah. We're going to do it for those like five, six sweet months where you're still hooked. Yeah. Yeah. You haven't quit yet. And then we introduce meta. I think that's part of their long tactic where, why do you think suddenly someone who has almost 900,000, both of us have a hundred thousand or almost, I have 140. Grind why is it, it at that point? Halt. Suddenly, yeah. like yeah. overnight, yeah. we all grind oh, yeah. it to halt. You don't think this is part of some big plan? I used to gain well, hundreds a day and then went to negative 300 a day. Like yeah. something happened. There was That's a change crazy. in the algorithm, whether it was intentional or not, yeah. which we could debate that for years and you'll never get an answer because the people at Meta probably don't even know. You no, know Cause the algorithm's don't. like, it's own living. I'll tell you, thing. as a matter of fact, when I had that chat with the girl from Instagram, how did you talk to somebody from Instagram? They reached out to me and like from a verified everything. And, and then they said, let's set up. A, that's another episode of ours a, a bit back. One of our most successful episodes. Yeah, because that one it did was, well because it people was, are um, interested in that. So I had a chat with Instagram. This is now at least a year. Over a year two ago. Two years yeah, now maybe. Over a year for sure. Uh, it was when I was doing well on yeah. Instagram. So I thought like, okay, they found me because I'm doing well. <laughs> but I had a chat with this young lady f- who works for Meta. Now I can come out and say it was kind of bullshit. Like she gave me the typical stuff that like, you know, blah, blah, this and that. So I, when you say, I don't even think they know, I don't even think they know either. No, right. So, no. um, but yeah, this whole new, new, um, you know, meta verified, let's put that on the back burner because I know for a matter of fact, that's one of our questions later. Sure. So you kind of jumped the gun and answered it. 
Jeff Mack will be signing up the day it becomes available. Honestly, yeah. And I said that in the last episode, th- too. I'm going to yeah, do no, it, like, too, man. <laughs> like I said in the last episode, I'll, I'll rehash it. I think the first people that sign up are going to see a huge benefit from it. Yeah, because, because other like, people are going to be on the back burner being exactly. like, should I, shouldn't I? And I feel and like those first people are going to get rewarded. This is a yeah. big thing for Meta. They want it to succeed. They, they yeah. want it to grow. So they want those first people to be an example of, hey, look how Positive great this is. Right? And... They don't want them telling their buddies, if I sign yeah, up and tell yeah. you. It's a waste of money. This is stupid. Like, yeah. it's, I haven't seen any think... change. It's like TikTok. It's like right. Reels. When they yeah. first came out, those were yeah. the ones that were blowing up, right? Yeah. Like I gained my TikTok following probably from three videos. And now, ever since then, it's just recycled yeah. Instagram gave, material. When I first started TikTok, I had all my content from years of just filming everything and using exactly, it on, on Instagram. Right? So I started posting, like, I don't know, sometimes three to ten videos a day. Just, wow, just building crazy. the yeah. account. Like, I wouldn't put any effort into it, though. It would just be like, put it up, quick little, yeah. you know. This guy doesn't have time to listen to our podcast. But he <laughs> That's why he posts three, three to videos ten a day. times a day. That's just on TikTok. You guys got to make the return on investment From a little better. From all social media, yeah. he's posting 180 <laughs> times a day. Yeah. Um, listen, if you listen to our last episode, Dom will give you a t-shirt. Will okay. you give him a t-shirt? What t-shirt? Like the one I'm wearing now? Yeah, just the one you're wearing now. It doesn't oh, even matter nice what sweater, it is. <laughs> just a um, used t-shirt. Feel but good. when I first started that, I was I had a bunch of videos go viral. Exactly. And I built the account up to like 550,000 people. And there was a day where I gained 50,000 subs in one day. <laughs> Isn't that <laughs> insane? It was in insane. one day. Oh my God. And like I didn't, do, I didn't put any extra real effort in. It wasn't like I was creating brand new content. It was just recycled content from... Maybe Instagram, a different but, song or something. Yeah, or but it was at the time where the, the supply was less than the demand. Yeah. So I had that, that opportunity. I was fairly, not, I wouldn't even say early to TikTok, TikTok but yeah. earlier than most. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, which, yeah, we'll get into that. You now. know, that, I have an interesting question now that you mentioned posting 10 times a day. I know that was at the, at the early time, but nowadays when you create a piece of content, do you create it specifically with a certain, you know, TikTok in mind, Instagram reels in mind, YouTube shorts in mind, or are you creating this piece of content and eventually it's going to find its way to all of those platforms? It's eventually going to make its way around. Yeah. Um, a lot of our content, well, our YouTube content is planned out. We have a videographer, yeah. so it's like, hey, this Sunday's video is going to be this. We need to start filming one to two weeks in advance. So that's very planned out. How often do you drop a YouTube video? Every Sunday. Every Sunday. Every right? Sunday. Um, which like wouldn't be possible if it was me. I used to film and edit all the videos and then we had another videographer that, uh, things didn't work out. And then we have Eric now, he's been here for four months now and it's, how's Eric working out? He's okay. He's all right. Okay. He posts, <laughs> posts every week. He he's never, hasn't missed a Sunday yet. So yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. he's nice. He's, he's Eric's, very good. Eric's here for all our listeners, literally <laughs> staring at me. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, so for YouTube, it's all planned and coordinated. But then like reels, I mean, we'll plan and coordinate the odd reel from our YouTube content to promote YouTube. But if we're trying to pitch or like kind of promote templates or molds, normally I'll just, you know, come out to the shop and the guys are pouring something and I'll quickly film it on my phone and like, that's that. And then I'll save each piece of content from that little project into a folder. And then when it's all done, I'll do like a full reel or a full short for, for YouTube. Or You're TikTok. A lot more organized than I. Think. Yeah, it's very. Organized. I probably have like, honestly, probably three hundred folders, like photo albums, in my phone of every project. So if I search like walnut serving board, I'll get like thirty different ones, or yeah. like walnut dining table, and I could just pick like which project. And all the video clips and finish shots are all in that folder. Jeff has a two million gigabyte <laughs> iPhone. <laughs> He's the first one in Canada with an iPhone eighteen plus. <laughs> Um, but that's a good question Dom had about, you know, filming content specifically for platforms. Now, this is my question, and it's not just for, for you. It's for you, too, because I'm very interested. For you, too, you'd get that. Eh? You, too. Bon- Bono. Bono? Bono? <laughs> um, ask your question. Ask my question. Okay. So, making content and filming content, Yeah. we're all businesses here, so mm-hmm. mainly, yes, content creation is obviously a business on its own, but you're still a woodworking business, like Mm -hmm. you sell stuff. Yes, you're gonna make money off YouTube and stuff, but same for you because I know myself, I've kind of taken a little turn towards, um, let me ask the question then I'll speak more to what I do, but do you make content for content? Or do you- To monetize, like to monetize the content itself. Exactly, do you make stuff just to make a video? 
Yes. This okay. Table, so this table we're sitting at. This no one ordered we're this. At. No, no, no. We. I saw another guy do a golf table, and I was like, "Ah, oh, it's nice, but I want to put my own this touch on it." This is a ripoff from someone else. It's an inspiration. Flip it over. <laughs> um, no, I saw another guy do it, and like they had like 50 tees in there and eight golf balls, and like, yeah. it was just like it was too much. So we just, you know, we went through our own tasteful touch on it, and I thought it'd be a bit of a challenge, making sure there's no bubbles in the grass, mm -hmm. and you know. How so you want to wean out the little errors before yeah, it's for a customer. Yeah, kind of like a challenge for ourselves, but I also knew it would make good content. So we made a YouTube video around this with no customer. That's why we're sitting at it now. Okay. And, you know, the idea is in the future, maybe we get some golf courses to buy them yeah. or for a man cave or whatever the case is. So, yes, we do create content. But just this is a, like, this is, a, you know, for our listeners, we're sitting at a, what is this, at least three by three, maybe even? A uh, 42-inch diameter. 42 so inch like diameter, a small and a half. kitchen table. Yeah, so it's a it's a table that's you know, it's going to be a valuable table. Like if you were to yeah, sell this, yeah. If I was to sell this, it would be five to seven thousand dollars. So there you go, five to seven thousand dollar table, strictly made just, just for, content. for content. Do you do that? Not in terms of five to seven thousand. Not to 000, that extent, but, but I've started to yes because. And then yeah. you sell the piece after. Not always, not always. So you make it, stuff just for videos too? I have, not all the time. I mean, if, if I happen to have something that somebody's commissioned, then great, I'll make as much content as I can around that. Yeah. But a lot of times, like now in the last year or so, I've sort of, you know, started to move away from the whole charcuterie board yeah. thing, right? That I was pumping out like thousands of those every <laughs> year. There's only so much content you can make gets old on a but I still think board. it works there's only you. so many debarking videos you can, yeah. it worked when pictures were a thing okay because you know a stack of boards here and a different board there but how many videos yeah. can there's i make of me so many processes. you know cutting out a handle or yeah. debarking an edge the, there, the router template videos and then, crush it you need to yeah, buy some templates the, yeah. do a router video and <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, specifically I a find, jeff mack template i gotta find yeah. someone that makes templates yeah, I don't know any in Toronto. No, I don't Maybe know. somebody no. drops something in the comments where you can buy templates. Maybe, yeah, <laughs> in the show notes. But we'll yeah, add, there's, we'll there's only it. so much content you can make around that. So it got to the point where I had to kind of in between those, those jobs, make things for the sake of making them just so that I could create some content. Well, and right there. branch out and step outside of your comfort zone. Your comfort zone was charcuterie boards, yeah. creating content. Yeah. But that, you know, what got you there wasn't going to get you to the next step. That's so right. you have to step out, get uncomfortable a little That's and right. take some chances. Yeah. And, and then things work for, for, so it's like when I did the, the puzzle boards there the first yeah. time, huge for probably a good year. I'd yeah. say that those did like really well for me. And, and then, they, you know, they taper off, they taper off and, you know, other people catch on, they start making yeah, them. Yeah. And so, and like Jeff said, you have to move on to the next thing and come up with something <laughs> new. You can't be stuck on that all the time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, but I mean, you do that, don't you? I, I do that for sure. Yeah. I mean, the way I do most of my content like, is... Do you not right now in your basement have 19 finished I do. stumps? I right? do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know what the funny thing is? They're not all finished because finishing them will be more content, right? Like there's, they're literally like 20 stumps there waiting for finish. Now, sorry to cut you off, but I, so you have all these stumps that you've put like 90% of the work in. You That's just have right. to finish them. Yeah. What I've noticed on Instagram lately and reels and shorts everywhere, no matter where you're posting it, is a full, complete video has been crushing it lately. So if I post slabs Thank going you. in a form, Thank you. epoxy being mixed, epoxy being poured, flattening on the CNC, quick little sanding, then oil, then finish shot, those complete videos, we'll call them, are doing way better than the just the pour or just yeah. the pigment. Which, I, is, which is a change, right, from we, the way the, it was. Before it was posted it was eight the second complete clip opposite. Of the yeah. shortest thing you can find. So you're finding that too? Yep. Okay, and I'll tell you why I'm saying this is because we've been joking about that number 10,000, yeah. 15,000 views. Like nowadays, I'm happy to reach that, right? Mm -hmm. Nowadays, mind you, back in the days, 15, I wouldn't be happy with. But yeah. So the other day, yesterday, I posted, not only did I post a full, a pretty, pretty, like a long process video again. Yeah. I posted it at noon, and that for me is unheard of, yeah. right? I've been an 8 a.m. poster. Look, can I guess what it did? I haven't seen it. Go ahead. It probably crushed it. So crushed it in 2023 terms. Crushed it relative to the last exactly. three months. Exactly, crushed it. Yep. So that for me, and I'm super excited about that because when I did those eight second, pull an eight second clip out of a full video and post it, 
I felt like a big piece of shit. I have to be honest. I personally felt it feels like lazy. all I'm yeah. trying to do is is please this algorithm get views and, and get yeah. views. Mm -hmm. And I felt and back in the days, I was always that IGTV guy where I was like, yeah, make it a, a minute, good a two and a half. Um, sorry, one and a half to two minute video for me did incredible back when IGTV was a thing, yeah. and it was always the full process. Yeah. Like I'm talking f sometimes from when the trees in the forest still oh, yeah. to a finished piece a, a year that. or two later because I did the, you know, I timed the video out. Those did awesome for me. And I'm so excited to get back to that. Yeah. And whether and nowadays I know a two minute video would be ridiculous unless it's no, YouTube just, or something. Just but aim for a minute for, for reels and shorts. Yeah. So I'm happy to do that, man, because it's, it's, it shows a little bit more process. It shows a little more, like you feel like you're giving more back. Yeah. yeah. So the fact that you just said that, thank you. I, th I think, <laughs> from like the algorithm's perspective looking in is, let's say you have a one minute stump video with six processes. You have 10 seconds of each process. Yeah. And if the person watches half of that video and then says, I'm bored, swipe, you got 30 seconds out of their time, which when Instagram sees, hey, they spent 30 seconds, it's only 50% of the video, but they still spent 30 yeah. seconds on his page. That's better than an eight second video watched three times. Cause, yeah. and who's gonna watch it three times? Yeah, Not yeah, a that's, lot. That's a really good point. That's a, yeah. Right? Because their, their goal is, to keep people on their app right. as long as possible. So that's actually the other really day I'm sitting on the couch with my wife and kids and, and I'm working on my f working air quotes, working <laughs> on my phone, but really I'm putting together my reel for the morning and by accident I pressed post <laughs> and it was one of those like seven second clips. Right. Yeah. And I go, Oh no, but you know, you have to wait for it to upload yeah. before you can. So as soon as it uploads, I press the edit button. Cause I'm like, okay, now I actually have, I didn't put a caption. I didn't yeah. put hashtags. I accidentally posted right. like a seven second clip. And my daughter, who's completely of the age now where she's like into social media and starting to like ask if she can get her own account. She's like, let me see the video. I go, no, 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 hang on. I pressed edit. So you won't be able to see it right now, right. which is what I thought. My wife's like, let me check. She pulls up my page yeah. there and there's is. my like no seven, caption. no caption, no hashtags. So then what am I left with? I go, you know what? And then my wife, Vicky says to me, is that it? Because it was one of those seven second pullouts. <laughs> yeah. And she goes, is that it? Or like, is there something going on? I go, no, no, I was trying to literally trying to please the, the algorithm. Yeah. And she, and she literally says to me, she's like, this is stupid. Like it, it's, it's a stupid video for someone yeah. who's not a woodworker or a content no creator. Context, what is this? Right. There's no anything. And I go, you know what? Thank you. Delete. Not only did I post an error, I deleted it. And then, and I worked on this video that I just talked about. And now it's maybe at like 20 or 30,000 views, which for me is good these yeah. days. Yeah. So I go, yeah, you're right, man. I think there's a point there where it's like, let's get back to actually yeah. providing <clears throat> some value instead of these. Exactly. Right. And you know what? It could also be right now that if Instagram wants to push these sort of longer form videos right now, it could also be that creating them right now, you're benefiting from that lack of competition. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. everyone's still doing not, those like exactly, six Exactly. Not clips, many people yeah. are creating minute long reels. Yeah. So yeah. if they're looking for ones to push, there's less of a pool there for them to be pulling from, right? That is yeah. true. I never thought of it from like that exact angle. And, and why didn't we ever think of this before? If their whole goal is to keep people on the platform, where did we ever think these like five second videos Well, that's were? because when we were posting longer ones, they, they weren't doing well. Like at that time, and I was guilty of it a lot, that I knew that that's what Instagram wanted. So I'd post a ton yeah, of a like quick bark one of my, yeah. one of my <laughs> most successful reels ever that I just actually posted it on TikTok last, what's today, Wednesday, like I think Sunday. So like three, four days ago has 2 million views on TikTok, on TikTok. Oh, and it's just me <clears throat> scraping a line of glue squeeze oh, out that one, eh? from yeah. between two boards. <laughs> But I'm gonna unfollow it's you on the TikTok. stupidest <laughs> reel, but it blew up on when I did it the first time I, on Instagram, got 6 million views. Crazy. And now on TikTok in four days or five days, it's at 2 million. Do you find though, anyone transferring over to help your Instagram following? No, I, I you know what? I've never really found that. No. Like TikTok I, to Instagram. I don't think Instagram. there's a lot of transfer. No? I think you no. gotta earn it on that platform or like, you and know, then you the might followers get a, stay on that you, platform. Yeah, you might get a little bit of trickle, but you know, we'll post on Instagram be like, Hey, check out our YouTube. But yeah. that that's cause it brings our customers value. Okay, There's like yeah. a, a real value. But if, if you're just like, Hey, go check out the same reel over on this page, like where the YouTube contents, you know, it might be a six minute, 12 minute video, which we're not posting on social. So there is a reason to drive in that yeah. direction. Yeah. 
I don't think there's a lot of transfer because I don't know if you've ever noticed. Sometimes I'll come across somebody's, you know, reel or post and I'll go look at their page. Not a huge page, right? An Instagram, they, they might have 20,000, 30,000 followers. And then in their bio, because, you know, a lot of people will write, you know, X amount. On yeah, yeah, yeah. There'll be like 3.2 million on, on TikTok. TikTok. Yeah, yeah. So it'll... clearly there's not a transfer no. there. You would assume they'd have a couple hundred thousand. At trickle. least, yeah. yeah. It's probably a lot of the same yeah. content. So like, why follow them in both places? Yeah. But tell me you don't feel like a, like a little bit of a legend when you see someone who has like 5 million on TikTok <laughs> and then you crush them on Instagram. Don't you feel like, ah, sucker? Right? <laughs> no, no, not at all. Not at all? <laughs> because these days I'm not crushing I, anybody yeah, or anything. Right. <laughs> But, um, um, yeah, what no, time, I, I know Dom's answer is going to be 8 a.m. for years now. Same with mine. And I, I actually I've, started lately too. I've been debating switching it up. I have switched it up this week. And I'll tell you right now, um, today I had to post a sponsored post. So that already, I already knew it's going to suck. But it, even, even <laughs> as a sponsored post, it's still, I think, almost at 10K I, for I me. I commented on that. I did see that, man. Yeah. Thank you very much. And it actually is a really good tool, like off the record. Yeah, I like legit thought, I'm like, that looks like a sweet little tool. I'm, I'm not the reno kind of guy. Yeah, yeah. So I wouldn't personally have a use for it. But like if somebody was like, hey, I got to rip out base bars, I'd be like, that's the tool. Dude, and you know why I think it's actually an awesome tool? Will they tool? sponsor this episode now if we mention well, the Well, let me reach out to them. I'll make some calls Drop the name there. and yes. then we'll ask for money later. <laughs> but I, when I first did my closet last, maybe a year or two ago, I actually reached out and I feel now I look back and I feel like such an idiot. I reached out to all these like DIYers and stuff and I was like, hey, how do I rip out baseboard without breaking it? Like literally, I <laughs> sort of put dents in the wall. So and... they're like, hey man, put a, you know, a metal uh, yeah. scraper and use a crowbar. Right. So the like, they, when this tool came al along and said like, hey, you know, you want to work together? And I was doing my daughter's closet. I was like, this is actually like, t speaking of like a product you actually like and enjoy. Yeah. This, this it fit perfectly, legit. man. It's, it's awesome. It's actually awesome. And I'm not lying. Um, Shameless plug, go check out my latest post. It's for Danko, Zenith by Danko, Trimpler. <laughs> Anyways, but, um, Dom's answer is 8 a.m. He's thinking of maybe switching it up. I, Vic, have kind of switched it up lately. I'm trying out the, um, going into my insights and seeing when I'm the most popular. Right. For me, it says noon every day. So, yeah. so I, I go, okay, let me try noon one day, which I did, and that video was doing okay. Um, and then Leslie said she does like the 8 p.m. So yeah. I was like, you know what, let me just try whenever I get a chance. And so that's what I've been doing. But Jeff, you're big on YouTube, Instagram, all that. Do you have a time or do you always vary it up for the, posting? The only thing we schedule and time out is our YouTube videos because we're trying to create a bit of that like... Anticipation. Yeah, like, hey, Sunday at 7 a.m., that's when the YouTube video comes out. I know like Sunday morning when I wake up, I should go watch it. Hopefully that creates a bit of like... Yeah. schedule for the the subscribers but in terms of all the other platforms or youtube shorts it's when i'm on my phone and yeah. like whether it's after the even instagram bit, whenever I, so the yeah. time of day really, really has no effect on sometimes i'll post back to back wow it's like, 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 like with, Mark within like 3 a.m within like minutes <laughs> like, of each other yeah i'll finish one post and i'll fire yeah. in the next one and post that off because i'm like ah, I'm, I'm gonna i know i'm gonna be busy for the next four or five yeah. hours really and i just like and throw you, more at the when wall. When you do that, things. do you ever find that one suffers, or do they? Have you ever had a case I, where they've both done really well? Yeah, the the one thing I've kind of learned over the years is like, don't analyze too too much because yeah. nothing really makes total sense. You're better off putting that time that you would have spent analyzing into making a new piece of content. Yeah. So instead of me being like, because there's a, there's too many variables, you know, it would be like going to everyone in the whole world and being like, which car is the best? There's way too many yeah, variables yeah. to get a real answer. So I just... Ferrari. Exactly. Yeah. But <laughs> no, I, I, uh, I, I just, I post whenever I want. Sometimes I'll do two, even three back to back to back. If I'm like, yeah. hey, I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm on my phone. I'm going to unfollow if I ever see three back to back to back videos. <laughs> do it tonight. I'll, I'll be part of the 13,000 people. <laughs> I'll block you before this is over. Yes. And you don't have to worry about it. Um, you don't have to worry about it. No, I, I think just more content. And as long as your content's bringing a piece of value, and that might be something satisfying, might be something educational, might just be something they just want to sit there and like, just consume like for fun or just whatever. For, yeah. yeah, just to, yeah. while they're relaxing on their phone. Um, but I, I, I'm a strong believer in like, more is better. And you know, if sometimes, I think we were saying before this, we, you know, you put all this time and energy into like this perfect reel, and then you post and it flops, yeah, and exactly. you're like, oh, I've spent all this time, and then another time you're like. I got 10 minutes, I'll pump out a quick whatever. And, uh, and then it goes crazy and you get millions of views and you're like, where, do, where does this align? So I think do the ones where you spend no time on them, do the ones where you spend a lot of time and 
everything in between and just post more. Just see yeah. what happens, yeah. And see, don't, don't overanalyze it all. My problem is when I have that like 10 or 15 minutes to prepare my posts, for years now, I was, all, I was always like, okay, whatever, like, let's say for example now it's um, you know, 8 p.m. or whatever, my, my, my watch is off, but it's 8 p.m. and I fix this post up and I'm like, no, I can't post till 8 a.m. You're right. It's like, why not post, post. when I have that time? And yeah. I think I'm so, slowly getting into that more. Think, so. think about it. There's probably people, I mean, I'm on Instagram probably more than I should be, but there's probably people who only go on Instagram in the morning and at night, and they're never on midday. Then there's other people that go on Instagram on their lunch break yeah, from yeah, different yeah. time zones. Yeah. So I would say don't ever look at the clock. If you've got time to make a post, post it. Because 8, 8 p.m. here is 5 p.m. West Coast. Yeah. And yeah. like... You know, do you want customers on the West Coast too? If you don't, then I would gear your stuff only to the East Coast. Yeah. But, you know, I'm not going to post in the middle of the night and appeal to audiences in countries that I don't ship to, you know? Yeah. But, it, you know, if I'm awake, my customers are probably awake for the most part, like the majority of them. So I'll post. Yeah. But yeah. there's 10. Do you know what country has the most to either of you? What country in the world has the most Instagram users today? Probably USA. Or no, no. It's, I would say India. <clears throat> USA's population yeah. is too low. It's USA most is of my small followers are USA, but I think I think it would be India. Yeah, I think it, it would have it to is be India. India. Really? Yeah. It is India. Yeah, just, India has like I think it's like three hundred million Instagram like daily users. Daily active users. Yeah, yeah. Or, yeah because um, I think the only country that would be able to compete would be China, China but, but they, they have they don't have they their, have their own reach. social it's media. Yeah. yeah, they have they WeChat. Have, yeah, they have their own version. But anyways, I thought that was a fun, uh, fun little stat. Um, Earlier this week, not only did Jeff, but Dom and myself, we both threw out some questions just for the episode overall, not just specifically for Jeff, but I think it's a, a good idea to get into some of those questions. Sure. Um, and while I look up some of those questions, why don't you tell our listeners and tell me too, because I'm very interested in other than for the Graham podcast, what are some other podcasts you listen to if you listen to any or what does Jeff uh, not do on his free time? So I listen to a lot of podcasts while I'm driving. Um, most of them are business related. So I'll listen to like, I used to listen to a lot of Gary Vee. I mm -hmm. think he brought a lot of value. Um, I've been listening to a little bit of Tony Robbins lately. Yeah. Oh, really? Um, yeah. Why aren't you doing push-ups right I, now? Like I, you jump. know what? I always liked Tony Robbins. I found Did him you? more, just more relatable than Gary Vee. Like I'm, I'm on the fence like with Gary, Gary Vee. Vee. I'm still a big fan of Gary. I think a lot of his principles I, apply and like, you just got to figure out how they work for you. Yeah. I think this is just me personally, and obviously he'll never hear this, but even if he does, personally, I think Gary Vee says a lot of stuff that he thinks he should say versus so? what he actually believes no. in. No? No. Okay. I've, I've met him. When I went to New York, I oh, met okay. him. okay. Yeah, yeah. And he's like... He's the most real I guy I didn't meet ever. him for a long time, but he's like, I've DM'd him and I've talked to him over DM and he's like a genuine... Okay. Like, I completely disagree with that. All right, all right. I, he's like... He just, he's a very genuine. Yeah. No, I, I think he'd like, he seems like he believes what he's preaching. I just, my thing with him is some of the things he says, I don't find practical for, for most people. Like okay. I, I've used before an example on our podcast, you know, where, you know, you've heard him say, yeah, I went to this garage sale and you, right. you want to hustle. Bought this for 30 cents I, and I, I sold it for Exactly. I looked it up quickly. I Googled it. People are selling it on eBay for Three hundred and fifty dollars. So I went back. They had seven of them. I bought all seven, yeah. and I sold them you, all for three. So that's but not practical to you. He probably actually did do that. Yeah, no, he very <laughs> well, very well may have. But it's my thing is I don't believe it's as easy as it sounds coming from his mouth. So here, here's my take on it. I think that when he does that, he's not appealing to the Doms of the world or the yeah. Jeffs or the Vicks. He's appealing to the people who are. I don't want to say down and out, but you know, maybe like low on their luck. Their, yeah. they, they, they can't pay the bill. They have two dollars to their name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what what do you do if you have two dollars to your name and that's it? Yeah. You know, what what are your options? Yeah. And I know that's an extreme example, but I think he's appealing to people who are like, I'm home on Saturday. I've got I've got twenty bucks. What, how do I turn this twenty into something else? Yeah. And like, where like what else? What are you gonna do? Put it in a stock and like wait? Yeah, no. Yeah. Are you gonna buy some like? you know, go going to buy that thing for $2 and then flipping it or buy 10 things for two bucks and hopefully one of them makes you 30 and the rest are fails then. So I think he's just appealing to a different person and it's not you. Yeah. That's, yeah, my that's, thought that's my. understandable. Yeah, I no, take I, back everything I, I've ever said about Gary. He's I, perfect. Uh, I agree with you. Yeah. No, I just feel it's like sometimes it's uh, maybe a little bit, it sounds easier than it is. 
right? I, I feel like some people are set up for disappointment that they're going to go to a garage sale thinking they're going to find something there that they're going to be able to quickly flip. But where it's when, like maybe more like a lottery, you like take your yeah, chance. Yeah, I mean, and I've no been to a, to all right, a lot all right, of garage all right. sales. If I had a hammer, I'd hit down. Let's let's stop focusing on Gary V. Here. We're <laughs> we're digressing. Although we love you, um, Jeff loves you more than I love you, but um, you're loved, um, Gary V. Can you DM him and tell him to listen to this episode? I'll, I'll do it when we're done. I'll send awesome. him a link. Actually, don't. Cause sure. I now that I bad mouth, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll, it'll make me look good. Yeah, you guys look right. bad. All right. Um, why don't we get into some questions? And why don't we start with this question here? Um, but you kind of touched on it earlier, Jeff, and it was from JD Woodworking and Designs, our good friend John. I believe that's John's page. And John Dominic. John uh, Dominic. Know him. Wow. That's his name. Yeah. Jeff's opinion on the new Meta verification. Um, the reason I said earlier is we'll get more into because I knew there was a question about this. But just to paraphrase you, you've already said you're going to be doing it. You're going to yep. be one of the first to market on this. As soon gonna... as it's available, because right now it's Australia and New Zealand That's only. Right. As soon as it's available in Canada, I'm going to sign up. Worst case scenario is it's not great and I unsubscribe from it. But That's right. I figure it's worth, the. I think it's like $20 Canadian when you convert. Yeah, yeah. $15.99 15 US. Or whatever, yeah. um, the, you know, the, they say they give you customer service, which I'm you know, kind of hesitant about. They say you'll show up more. Uh, in search and explore. That's and the part I'm more most excited that's, about. That's <laughs> yeah, that's the most interesting part. Um, and then I think if you like leave comments on like bigger pages, you'll kind of bump to the top. Oh, and okay. Because like I already have a bigger following, I think I'll you know really be at the top there. Yeah. So you know more eyes potentially there. Um, what were the other two perks? So you're gonna have the uh, access to customer service, the reach, um, the check mark. Yeah. And then. Uh, there was one more. There was, there one was more. something else there. Yeah, there was one other thing. Um, either way, why don't people just go but, and listen to our previous episode? <laughs> yeah, and just <laughs> listen to the last but, episode. Right? The podcast. answer is yes, I'm going to try it out. Worst case scenario is it's not great and I unsubscribe, but I'm, I'm definitely on board with trying it out. And yeah. Because mainly for a business, if I had a personal account, right. I wouldn't bother because I don't think there's any benefits. That's more for family and friends. But yeah. because like I'm trying to you know, run a business here. I think it makes business sense. So. so that's what I think too. I think in, in the way Jeff said it is, and we talked about this last episode, it makes sense if you're a, a business selling products and you mm -hmm. use your social media to get your name out there or b a business like myself, but from the standpoint of wanting to grow bigger, to work with brands, mm -hmm. then it's also a good idea. But why would anyone with a, like a personal account, like I always throw my wife or your wife's page out. Yeah. Like, why would they ever pay for Meta Verify? That's just no real absolutely value. ridiculous, <laughs> right? Like, um, but yeah. So let's 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 move on to the next question sure. because that was a good question, and thank you for your input um, for our listeners out there. If Jeff's gonna do it, um, you know, he kind of knows what he's doing on the social side of things. Then maybe it's a good idea, right? We'll leave let, it at let that. Let me do it first for a few months, and then everyone yeah, can check I'll in. I'll be right there I'll... with you. Don't worry about that. <laughs> and I'll, I'm gonna reap the benefits first of those market. first. Uh, okay. Um, this is more of just a, uh, I guess a comment, but hand and soul crafted says, what does Jeff see? Oh, sorry. It is a question. <laughs> um, what does Jeff see as the next trend in woodworking? Because he's been at the forefront. I, 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 well, first of all, just, how do you feel when someone says you've been at the forefront? Uh, it feels weird. Cause I mean, I think we've been kind of at the forefront now looking back with like kind of evidence of you know, what we've done, but it, it just feels weird to be in that position. Um, I, I personally think that we're going to, I don't think epoxy tables are going anywhere. Don't, don't, you're not allowed to talk about epoxy and I'll tell I'm, you I'm why. Not, I'm not going to talk about like it. 20 questions later about <laughs> epoxy. <laughs> no, I, I don't, I don't think epoxy tables are going anywhere. I think you're just going to see different styles. So it might be white epoxy and, or black epoxy uh, with walnut instead of the blues. You know, mm. I think the colors will change. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, they're unique and they have their place. They're not for every house, obviously. I think we're going to see a lot of like all wood white oak tables. Like white oak's been kind of in, on trend for a few years. I love white oak. Oh, you know, it's all the tables in my house are all solid yeah. white oak. And like, yeah. I, I love looking at them. They're like kind of basic looking because the grain, there's no like funky craziness crazy. going on. Yeah, yeah. But I just, they're just solid. And, and I think that's going to be sort of what's next. Um, I'm also seeing a lot of curves, a lot more like, you know, maybe not a rectangle table, but like a table with like a big like eight inch radius on the corners or, oh, you know, yeah. more like organic shapes. You see it a lot in like couches right now mm -hmm. and chairs and 
It's a lot of curves, less like modern square. It's more curves. You're also seeing a lot more like browns come into to play now, like browns and beiges, where it used to be like gray and white if you're yeah, like yeah, painting yeah. a house or that's right. doing a kitchen. But now you're starting to see like a lot of tans, browns, beiges. Well, that's where I think the white oak and like walnut will still be around yeah. too, but I think the white oak is going Is that on. why you wanted to go to the tanning salon the other day? Yeah. Because tan's coming back? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that, that's kind of where I see it going. I, I see, and I'm not just saying river tables to like promote business. I just, that's just honestly what I see. Um, yeah. But I also think, yeah, white oak. Uh, plus there's so many options you can do with white oak in terms of a finish if you're, I know you guys aren't Rubio guys, but there's, you know, you can change the look of it to fit a lot of different scenarios with multiple different finishes. Sure. Um, that's awesome, man. Yeah, that's yeah. a lot of good, uh, I think that's a lot of good insight. Don, what do yeah. you think, man? Any, like anything that's coming up that, like, what do you think? I'm doing exactly everything that Jeff just everything. said. I made a <laughs> mental note. Start I'm tonight. actually making a table. This is a true story. I'm starting tomorrow morning. It has eight inch radius curves. <laughs> it's, it's, Built it's, out it's a white, white oak. oak. Yeah. Solid white oak base. <laughs> With a tiny river in the middle. <laughs> But that epoxy is going to be white. I, I'm telling you, I, I already thought of this earlier. But that sounds amazing. I mean, I'm starting tomorrow morning. Um, all right, so that, thank you for that question. This one is just more, I think it's a little bit more of a vent okay. because we've all been kind of experiencing this. But um, a little of that says, my most recent video has over 2,300 views on Facebook. And mind you, these are relative to people's accounts, yeah. right? So perhaps 2,300 is a lot. <laughs> on Facebook, but a paltry, paltry? Paltry. Paltry? Yeah. Like chicken? Kind of like poultry. Like poultry? <laughs> but with an A, paltry. Okay, so paltry. I always look to Dom when it's like a, like a, something I need smarts for, right? He's like a my, lot of wisdom over he's there. like my smart yeah. guy. He's so old, right? He's look been at, through look all Look at this. all the grays. <laughs> look at all the Every grays. Every gray is, is a your, your, your sliver of wisdom. Like what he just described is the next trend. It's like it's got the That's, white. Hey, I, I will take that. <laughs> With the I'll, curves, eh? I'll, I feel sorry for anybody that wants my face as their yes. next trend. <laughs> it's actually Dom's face lasered onto white oak. Um, so a little of that had 2,300 views on Facebook. So we're going to assume that's huge versus 26 on Instagram. Why can't I gain any traction on IG? Um, Okay, so this is a question for us, okay? Yep. It doesn't necessarily say Jeff. And let me just skip past this quickly by saying, hopefully after listening to this episode and a lot of those stuff that you touched on earlier, mm -hmm. maybe they can take some of these tips into account I, and maybe that'll help your Instagram. But I think first and foremost, don't get too caught up on the views of things. Like, yeah, point. you're gonna use that as an analyzing tool, but don't get too caught up on it. Make content that you'd like to make, make sure it's, fairly organic and like true to you. Have fun. Have fun. Yeah. Don't, you know, what if, what if the 2600 view video was ha like horrible to make and you hated it? Are you going to make another one or would you rather make more of the stuff you like and be you and, and let it catch on if it wants to? And yeah. I think they actually meant 26 views. Like, like there's 26 right. views. So not 2600. <laughs> so that, that like, it would be hard to encourage someone to keep going, but Mind you, if you have, you know, 100 followers, that's 26% of your, yeah. you know, so I don't know. It depends on your just, account, right? I always think it's... Try new things, post more, keep yeah. going, try again, keep going, try yeah. again, and don't get too caught up on every little number. At the end of the day, like, you know, if your goal is to grow your account, then yeah, analyze those numbers. But if your goal is to, maybe it's selling charcuterie boards, if that's your goal of the account... 26 views or 2,600 views, there's no direct correlation to more boards. Depends on what your end goal is, yeah. Yeah, if your end goal is to sell stuff, maybe spend less time, you know, posting that stuff on Instagram if you're going to be upset about the amount of views or if you're, you know, if it keeps you up at night or, or keeps you thinking about it. And, you know, maybe like call up some realtors and be like, hey, I make these boards. Like, instead of, you know, dr or, you know, sort of lingering on that Stop one Stop focusing on the negative. And, yeah, be like, you know. okay, like, let's, let's do something positive that I have a bit more control of because... It's not that they did something wrong. And like when they got a good video, it's not that they did something really right. It's yeah. it's just the algorithm yeah. being the algorithm and we don't have really any control over it. So like don't take it personally, I guess, would be the first thing. And spend more time on I like to call them like money making activities if the goal is a business and to make money. Like, you know, dwelling on on a twenty six view or twenty six hundred view video, you could have made a phone call to a realtor and, and got a new customer in the yeah. time you spent dwelling. Yeah. So try yeah. not to let it you know, linger too long. Perfect. Anything else? Yeah, no, I, I agree with Jeff. I mean, 
I know it's tough when you're getting 26 views only, but I think you have to keep in mind that if you're now chasing the algorithm and what used to be fun and exciting for you is now making you miserable, yeah, yeah. you have to look at it and, and ask yourself, you know, what is, you're is doing it and if it's it? worth it, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, awesome, man. Good. Um, let's move on here. So this is where we get to Jeff's bread and butter. Okay. DSL Woodwork says, or asks, I should say, does he see any decrease in the epoxy trend or is it still going strong? Slash deeply rooted creations says, are epoxy tables just a short term trend or is it here to stay? Slash Morgan. Slash dot, from Guns N' Roses? Slash <laughs> sent in a question. message? That's right. Wanted to say hi to Dom That's specifically. <laughs> Um, Morgan.custom.woodcrafts, what do you see being the next big thing in woodworking? Is it, or i.e. river tables? So boom, just a bunch of questions about ultimately if you follow Jeff Mack, whether it's on Instagram or, or YouTube or here we're in his shop looking around, you work with epoxy. Yeah. You, I mean, you sell your own, is it your own brand or you still work with Ecopoxy? Yeah. Either way, you work with a brand of, you, you, you use... We're avid epoxy users and sellers and... Boom. There you go. Avid epoxy users. Um, now, talk to us about epoxy, man. So I wouldn't have started a pigment brand in a form, like a mold brand, if I thought it was going anywhere. You know, there's, there's the, the group of people that just hate it, you know, which teach their own. But that's, that's, to those people, that's like a funny thing it's become. I don't think they, this is once again my personal opinion, I don't think they hate it. Right. I think they, they, they like the love idea the idea of hating it. it. That's right. They have a common interest with like our good buddies. friend, um, Bourbon Moth. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Great guy. I love the oh, guy. Oh, yeah. He's a good he friend sells, of mine. He sells like shirts that like screw pallet. Yeah. yeah like, yeah. you know, it's, it's more of like Say a no funny, to river tables. That's and... right. It's more of like a funny thing to hate it. Yeah. But, anyways, get back um, to being serious. No, about... I, think, I think we'll just see like, yeah, different colors, different styles. I mean, you know, this piece of wood that at the table we're sitting at right now would have been firewood five years ago. Mm -hmm. And there's so much interesting character here, but without epoxy, you wouldn't really be able to take advantage of that. So, you know, when, when we order wood from our supplier now, basically I say like, whatever would have been firewood five years ago, I want those in full slabs. And it's stuff that was unsellable pre sort of the epoxy craze. Mm -hmm. And it, there's like, you know, wherever there's knots and voids, it's always the beautiful grain around that. When you have pieces of wood without, I mean, I'm not, gonna, I'm not talking about burl and stuff but when you have like a piece of walnut with no knots voids character it's normally just straight grain like yeah, not yeah. the most interesting where when you get the knots and the voids and all that you get really cool grains and so i think it's here to stay it just you know it's a different style i don't think it's going anywhere there you go now let me ask you something personally mm -hmm. you've been doing this business how long the for 10 years 10 years is that epoxy is more recent than 10 years epoxy though? was i think 20 16 or 17. Okay, so six, seven six, years, in, six years, enough years that if there were any problems with your earlier tables, they would have come back to haunt you. Have any of them? Like uh, to the point where you're willing to talk about like, yeah, you know what? 20 customers from 2016 came back with some problem. Like, do you see any longevity <laughs> problems with epoxy? We, so we haven't had any issue. Well, okay, we had one issue with one customer. Um, Customer supplied his own wood. I don't think it was kiln dried. Oh, that's always a problem. Yeah. It ended up going to court and all that. Oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was. Okay, uh, okay. It was interesting. That's a whole um, other. That'll be was, next week's episode. Yeah, it was. Jeff a, goes to court. It's a whole thing. <laughs> but um, no, we we used his wood and and the the epoxy split from the wood. But we did everything the same way we did every, well, probably about five hundred tables, you know, in the history of making tables, and we've had one fail, and it was his, and he supplied his own wood. He said it was kiln dried, you know, so you can, you can connect the dots and make your own assumptions. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was our only issue. And it's, I, you know, after years of it, I was like thinking, oh, like, you know, we're probably gonna start to see some popping up and have some failed, maybe. And they, the customer's like, oh, I wanted a new table. Like who yeah. knows, you know, yeah, but yeah, I, yeah. I haven't had to go out and like repair a split. Sometimes like, you know, when we have like a new employee, cause I'm not the one making the tables anymore. Uh, you know, they'll forget to remove the epoxy, but that's like a failure on our part. But yeah, when we build them properly, like, you know, the customer calls up, hey, it's split in here. And we're like, oh, okay, like, looks like this happened. Bring it back, fix it all up and away we go. So yeah, no failures due to like, no failures when it's 
properly done. Right. But a few of those earlier ones where, you know, we didn't do it properly, they may have had an issue early on, but not like unfixable. Or, yeah. But surprisingly, considering the whole application, not as not that many issues. Nice. And Don, what do you think? I'll ask you the same question. You think Epoxy is here to stay? I mean, it's it's been around long enough now that you can't really say it's a short term fad because yeah. I think I think it's past that point. Uh, I mean, I think there's just so much that you can do with it that, like Jeff said, maybe you're not going to see as many of you know the Blue River tables yeah. that have been popular for the last few years or like the Walnut and Black, but you know something like this, like the like. Uh, more of a like a theme like table, a theme table theme, yeah. right? Or hey, I've seen people do the you know the poker tables with the poker chips. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there's just so many possibilities, and I don't really see it going anywhere. You know, yeah. anytime soon. I, I don't think it's going to get much bigger. I think we've kind of plateaued, and like you know, maybe it gets a little smaller and then levels out. But I don't. Yeah, I don't see it growing much more. But I also don't see it shrinking too yeah, much. Yeah, I, more. I, I don't see it tell. disappearing. Like I don't see it being a day where. There's no more epoxy no. tables. I think, you know, there's always going to be someone that wants some version or another of one. What's your biggest mold you sell? Uh, the 24 inch by 48, so coffee table size. Yeah. Have you ever done a table just epoxy? Um, no wood at all. Maybe the legs or whatever. But no, like... we, we did a bunch of uh, panels for Amazon's head office in Toronto. Okay. Or not their head office, but their Toronto office. And they were just epoxy panels. So we poured like just one and a quarter inch sheets of epoxy. What did they do with that? Uh, they were part of a privacy wall. So they had like this wood privacy wall. Oh. And then we poured green and blue translucent panels that randomly went into the wall. Oh, that's cool. Um, so yeah, we've poured like, you know, a form full of epoxy. Uh, but it wasn't used as a table. This guy's friends with Jeff Basils. <laughs> I've, Gary I've always wondered. What else you have on your Rolodex? I've always <laughs> wondered about that. If if it's just epoxy, and if it's large enough, if if there would ever be issue with it, kind like of sagging, sagging. I mean, we would have experienced that with some of our river tables. If it's not heated, though, why would it sag? Or it's, it's a plastic. Can, At the end of the yeah. day, it's a plastic. So if you know if it's thick enough and cured properly, yeah. like if it flash cures, it's a little more brittle. If you get your mixture wrong and you do too much hardener, it will cure less, ironically. It sounds the opposite, but okay. mm. too much hardener makes a softer epoxy. Mm. Yeah. So then you could get some flexibility in it, but as long as you get your mixture right, because it is, at the end of the day, like a chemical reaction. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome, man. Yeah, so a lot of questions were based off epoxy, and um, yeah, we're. I think we're, when I say three of us as makers, are probably all gonna continue to use it. I know the brand that we work with, Dom and I, um, they came out with a bunch of new types of epoxy, mm -hmm. different. Um, there's deep pour, there's clear. Which brand? Uh, rust -Oleum. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever heard of them? No. Huh? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I see you guys post about them all the yeah. time, and I, I've i never worked with them, but they, I mean, you see the products everywhere. It they, seems like a good they're, company. They're, they're just a tiny company. I think they have like Are they small? 2,300 brands under them or something. Maybe not that many, but at no, least No, they are actually a very big company. They've been around really? over 100 years. They're yeah. that, really? Yeah. yeah. yeah they're I didn't think they were that old. I knew they were like oh, they around. Have, but... Yeah, Tremclad and all these other brands under them. Wow. But we're not here to talk about yeah. that. So, um, Mitch Built says, Jeff's the unicorn. He <laughs> operates on Instagram against the grain and does very well. So, interesting. Yeah. Um, Vance Made, our good friend Sean, wants to know, how the hell do you put up with Vic and Dom? So while you answer that, <laughs> this is the first time he's had to deal with us in four years. That's it's true. Yeah. Kind of a question is actually. Yeah, you know what? It's uh, it's been a nice break. Yeah. I I, I message this guy every day. Actually. He's gonna he have never us back. Me. He's gonna have us back in 2027. 20... <laughs> We're <laughs> on a four year cycle. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Our our quarter our quarterly in terms of years every four years. Um, the board boy wants to know what your biggest fail was, funny or serious. Do you have one you want to talk about? Yeah, I know I most think... recently, before you even go on, I'm pointing to this table in the other room there that I just watched your recent YouTube video where the... Oh, the curb You one? stacked the wood. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, that wasn't a big fail. It but... wasn't a big fail because it wasn't for a customer, No, right? that was like a, hey, we have a bunch of extra of these pieces of wood. Yeah. Let's try putting them on their end and yeah. pour. That was just for like YouTube content. But, um, well, the plan was to make a coffee table and then it turned into like decent YouTube content because it did fail. So you actually, in the previous question, you answered like, no real customers ever come back and 
and said, hey, my table cracked in half and like, yeah. broke my kid's leg when it <clears throat> collapsed or something. That would yeah. be a fail. That would be a big fail. Um, so do you have any that is even funnier that you want to talk uh, about or anything? I think my biggest fail, and this is more from like a business sense, was c- a couple of fails. So this was an early on fail that I think would relate to a lot of people. Other than having us here tonight. Well, that's like an ongoing fail. That's, an ongoing, that's a continuous fail. Um, early on, I, I used to... When it was just me, I was making everything. Uh, I would collect deposits from the customers and I wouldn't document it. This is like <laughs> so early. So I would collect like a couple thousand dollars and I wouldn't write it down anywhere. I wouldn't, there'd be no record of this. And then it was time for the customer to pay. And I didn't know what they paid. I didn't know what they owed. And I couldn't really go to them and be like, hey, you owe 3,000 if it's only 2,000 because that looks real bad. Yeah. So then I would kind of just rely on them until I learned like, hey, this is not, I don't think I ever got like, you know, ripped off or anything, but that was like an early fail, just like a stupid business fail. Why? Like you were just so happy to get the money and like you just... I was just unorganized. Yeah. Just not organized where now we document everything. And if we need to go back, it's like customer paid this much on this. Like it's just obviously like there's bank records too, but it was just, I was unorganized and I would consider that like an organization fail. Um, And then... But you learned from there, right? Like Yeah. I was like, don't make the same mistake twice. The one time when I was panicking, thinking... How much do, does this customer owe and he's on his way here? And like, I don't even know, like that feeling made me not make that mistake again. And I implemented a system so it yeah. doesn't happen again. The next fail would have been when we first got this shop, we did a job for the Montreal Canadians and the job was $250,000 and it kind of grew as the job was going on. So it turned into, well, no, it grew to 250,000, but it started out a little smaller and Every week, they're like, can you also make this? Can you also make that? And they were worried about getting opened. They wanted to open the restaurant before the season started, like the week the season started. That's Canada's largest restaurant, by the way. Exactly. Right. Did you know that before? I knew that after I watched your video. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one big mistake I did is like, we were here till like 9, 10, 11 p.m. Trucks were coming. We're loading them up. Like, it was just a grind to get it out on time. And I ended up chasing 140 grand for a year because I didn't get paid. Oh, so I, everything was there in the restaurant they're operating and I'm sitting here 140 yeah. grand, not in my bank account. And they weren't that motivated to pay. It wasn't the Montreal Canadians. It was like the companies yeah, yeah. working for them. So did you, did, you can whisper, no one's listening. You smashed every table. You went to that restaurant you, <laughs> and destroyed it at night. No, you know what we did though, which I think I may have told the story, but we wrote Go Leafs Go on the inside of a bunch yeah, of the yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Did in I the mention podcast, that? The one we, I only just we started recorded, talking yes. about that because that job was like long gone. I didn't want to like risk anything. But um, no, it took me a year to get paid. And now nothing leaves the building until it's paid in full. Okay. I don't care. Like yeah. if, you do, if you don't want your table, you lose your deposit. I would never like actively go out looking for yeah, that. Yeah. But, you know, it'll leave, my, it'll leave the shop once it's paid in full. And nobody has a problem with that. Of course. You know, yeah. people as are a customer. You shouldn't. I mean. Yeah. People want that table and they're like, oh yeah, like it makes sense that it leaves the, the shop yeah. paid for. So that was a, another fail. That was like, yeah, more of a business fail. But like, I think being a good person as a business owner, um, being a good person and relying on that everyone's a good yeah. human. I think that's going to come back to bite you, right? Like yeah. in terms yeah. of, and a lot of people might not do it with, you know, vicious or malintent it just kind of happens but hey i don't have the money for this table no problem we'll even store it for you free of charge for yep. another two months until max, you yep. until you have that money but it's not leaving until yep. i get that money yep. right yeah i i think that's a lesson that uh, unfortunately most people have to learn the hard way right like, i mean most people it, it's not that you know extreme of a case no, where was, you're talking that's big yeah, yeah. over a hundred thousand dollars but you know, how many people have you seen, you know, on Instagram, smaller makers and stuff that take orders, you know, somebody calls them or messages them. Can you make me this? Can you, you know, they don't take a deposit. Without a deposit. They I, make the item and then the person yeah, just goes, they, goes missing, right? Yeah. It's so like a second part of that. Don't even start the job until yeah, you have 100%. a deposit in hand and get yeah. 50% up front. I used to be afraid to ask for deposits. I'm yeah. like, they're not going to give me 50%. No, yeah. But then I learned like. I'm not even lifting a finger until I get 50%. And now you've got my full, And if it's you know, custom, I'm talking like, let's say. Order materials. Let's say and, this, um, yeah. you know, once again, for our listeners, I'm pointing to the, the T card or whatever this is called on, on a golf score table. Card. Let The scorecard. Let's say this had the name of the golf club yeah. or the country club. That's custom. I can't sell this to anyone else. No. 100% of the price. Oh, yeah. Never mind 50, right? Like, yeah. it's like It's like, because with 50% deposit, you could take it and go, listen, this guy's not coming. 
I've made now 50%, and I'll sell it to someone else yeah. for another 100%. Right. But if it's like custom personalized, If it's completely custom, then... it's like, hey, you have to understand, it's gonna be like 75% deposit yeah. and then 25% for you to take it out the door, right? Yeah. I, I think a lot of people, especially when they're starting out and they're excited to get those orders, they have that fear that I can't ask for this. They're gonna say no, they're gonna, I'm gonna lose the order. Yeah, yeah. But at the end of the day, if that person's gonna say no to giving you a deposit. They're gonna say no for some other reason. Maybe you don't want that That's order right. to, yeah. to begin yeah. with. It's a good right? way to if weed that, out yeah. you know, some bad customers. Yeah. And um, it sounds kind of cliche, but you know, the, the biggest fail I think would be not doing things sooner. So when I was ready to hire, I was so scared, like tire yeah, my yeah, first yeah. employee and, and it's, it was the best decision I ever made. And then every employee after Got that, better and better, you know, yeah. expanding into the space, it was scary and, you know, being afraid to fail, but just take the chance, make a leap. If you lose a bit of money, it's not the end of the world. You can always remake the money, but you can't get the time back. You spent worrying about the decision you're going to make. About making that decision. Yeah. yeah. Kind of jump in head first and just go for it and yeah. kind of react as you go. Like plan it a little, but don't, don't wait till everything's perfect. Right. Awesome. Um, RJ and Scaper just wanted to say hi, sir. Okay. Hi. Hello. Um, so someone who probably works for you. Internally. Internally. <laughs> Jeff Max um, comment. What is the one thing you do at work you wish you didn't have to? For example, inventory. Oh. So, you know. Maybe, maybe that person doesn't like doing inventory. <laughs> yeah. Um, Jeff asked himself just so yeah. he can stop doing it. And now he has to hire someone he, else. <laughs> I probably, I don't know. I kind of. I like doing everything I do now because there's, if there's things I don't really enjoy doing, I kind of get one of the employees to do it. <laughs> but um, so next time we ask you to be on our podcast, who are we actually going to be interviewing? <laughs> he's going to get someone else. Eh? Like he's yeah. going to get one of his employees. Yeah, exactly. Because I'm not enjoying this. Hey, um, can you go? Uh... <laughs> I think I think doing I think ordering product. I hate. So here's my beef with a lot of wholesale. Like when I buy wholesale from other companies. We have to type up an email of all the things we want, and then they send us an email back saying, yeah, here's, here's your invoice, but we didn't have this item, and we didn't have that item. And like, it's just like a whole bunch of emails that I don't think have to take place, where, you know, not to like shamelessly plug here, but when we built Beaver Dust and Empire, we wholesale to other companies, and it's all done online. So if you go on there and you fill up your cart, all that stuff's in our building, yeah. Yeah. and you pay for it, you order it, and then it ships out the next day, and then you get your product in, I don't know, three days, four days. And if days. you don't have it in your warehouse, it's not available, it's not online. available online. So there's no yeah. email bullshit back and forth, wasting everyone's time. Oh, we don't have this. Do you want this instead? And it's like, fuck, just if you don't have, like, I should be able to go on your website in today's age yeah. and see what you have in stock. And if that's you don't how I have think, it, it should say sold out. Exactly. Yeah. I think that's what a good company will do. And uh, so, yeah, I would say ordering product because I'm always like, oh, I don't feel like going through that runaround of like, we don't have this. Do you want this as a replacement? Or like, I just want to go on, place the order, and know in 10 minutes I'm done. Boom. Um, so I would say ordering product, which I've, out, not outsourced, but like Andrea does a lot of that. And um, Are you just, ever going to get to that point? This is now my question, not from a listener or not from one of our viewers, but are you ever going to get to that point where Jeff Mack Designs is completely running itself and you're like on, a on a beach? Like I'm <laughs> talking like not like you're on a beach because it's your week vacation. It's like that's your life. Because it's it's in the I, background, passively running with no, help. No, well, no, I enjoy it too much. Like I, I wake up every morning and I can't wait to get here. And at the end of the day, like I mean, it's what like 9 p.m. now, and we're still here, and I'm not like, hey, you know, I should be yeah, going yeah, home. Yeah. Like I'm still enjoying it. Um, well, that's because of Donna. So, I mean, like if, like one day if I sold the company and I ended up on a beach, but I didn't have this responsibility. But if this was operating, I don't think I would want to not be here if I was still owner. You know, like yeah. right now I'm 100% owner. If I ever sold it, then I think it would, if I sold 100% of it, it would be easy for me to like walk away from it. Yeah. Or not easy to walk away, but I could come to terms with that. But I, I would never want it to be like running and me not be a part of it. Cause I genuinely enjoy like the day to day, even if it's like breaking down boxes in the warehouse cause the guys in shipping need a hand or problem solving, you know, here in yeah, the shop. Yeah. I just, I just like it. Like it's, I would be bored on a beach. So it's, the only way you would ever not be part of Jeff Mack Designs is if you 100% sold it. All. Yeah. Yeah. But if I have any sort of skin in the game, I think I would want to be here on a, like a full-time basis. And So that's what Dom and I wanted to talk to you about. Should we tell him now that at the end we want to, or should we do that off the record? You can do it now. We want to buy your company. 
Okay. At the end of this podcast, we're going to make you an offer. Okay. But first, I want you to answer this question. Okay. Because just tell Jay- them now, we have seventeen dollars. Yeah, seven and the leftover pizza. And it's all yours. Is there any bread knots? There are bread knots. Okay, we're good. We're good. All right. You guys heard it all officially. <laughs> Half You're my new employee. <laughs> <laughs> you can leave. Oh. I'm going to make Jeff stay all night. Who's going to edit this? <laughs> he is good at this. <laughs> um, but before you actually answer that, I want you to answer JX Mass 60's question. Okay. Can you... <laughs> Sorry. It's going to be a good question. Yeah, this is. It, I, I don't know if it's good, and I don't know why I laughed so much. Can you make me a wolf table? <laughs> <laughs> a wolf a wolf table Look, can you make me a wolf table so do you like, want the backstory on this oh there's yeah, a backstory yeah, I so I, know what a wolf yeah, table first of all, I want to know what a wolf table is so that's John from QA designs and oh, okay the QA designs make cell phone cases out of like wood and okay and anyways they this is a lot less funny now I thought it was a lot, <laughs> like, I thought actually someone wanted a wolf but, table <laughs> but so back back in uh, maybe a few a years ago a wolf case in a box <laughs> Back in the day, we would get people every day asking, can you make me a wolf case? And everybody wanted wolf cell phone cases. And we were like, what, what is, is the deal with wolf? Just a cell phone case with a wolf on it. So now the big joke is like, can you make me a wolf table? Yeah, can you make yeah. me a wolf this? Can you make me a wolf that? And like, we're all just like, fuck off with yeah. the wolf stuff. No you more know? wolves. No more wolf yeah. stuff. So he just did that as a joke. But oh, okay. uh, we can make one. But seriously, can you? Yeah. Okay. It's no problem. You have a wolf template? You're gonna we have do one. actually. You we actually have three have wolf templates. <laughs> We have That's like a full enough. body one, like a howling one, and then some other one. Um, who do you respect the most in the industry? But this is a tough one before you even answer, because like what think, industry? Woodworking, YouTube? I think we should go wood and epoxy, because that's kind of what I'm most familiar okay. with. I think I think I got to shout out Black Forest. I really respect what they do. Yeah. I know, you know, we're competitors technically, yeah. but I... Uh, you know, I, I follow them on Instagram and I talk to Dylan every now and then. And uh, yeah, they just, they do nice stuff. Like I genuinely like what they make and yeah. um, I've never been out there. I want to, they've been here, but I was on, I think I was on vacation. Oh, him and his man. dad came out, so I, I didn't get to show them around. But yeah, they, they make, you know, they make nice stuff. They, yeah, they just do nice work and they're kind of pushing the boundaries. And Where are they? They're in Calgary. Yeah, they're all Calgary, yeah, yeah. yeah. I knew it was out in the... the but yeah, I would say they're like... The industry leader in this space like i think they're yeah like i think we were you know maybe side by side from like the table manufacturing standpoint but i think we've shifted our focus to the online store and the e-commerce side which i think we do a lot better than them but i think they do like their, their tables and stuff like they're just that's what they they, do. they just yeah they they do a really nice there's job a few up and comers i've seen and and for me when i judge someone based off their um instagram size that's that's wrong i mm-hmm. admit that that's wrong mm-hmm. but that's also what draws my attention to you. What or did to... I see? They just made a table for someone. I know Backyard Resin. Yeah, they're out of Montreal. Montreal, yeah. <clears throat> they seem to be like, they do a lot of theme tables. Yeah, and... like Star Wars and all that. They're yeah, doing yeah. a huge... But yeah, they, they, they do nice in, like, stuff. like the last year. Yeah, I think it was like during pandemic. They kind my, of I don't up. know if they were doing it before. I'm talking their Instagram specifically. Yeah, they, I remember they're, they're like, up. our 500,000 giveaway. And that yeah. seemed like it was like a few months ago. Now they're at like, you know, 800,000 or whatever. Yeah. Like, so it's like... Man, they're, they're just uh, cruising. They're crushing it. Yeah, there's, so. there's a handful of guys who are like really good in the industry, and yeah. I don't have like ill feelings toward. You know what no, I mean? Like no, I like yeah, the competition. That's, that's Black kinda... Forest, a few times, like they made me step on my game because I see them do something like, oh, we got we could do better than do that, that, or yeah. you know, I, I see like competition is a good thing. I don't see yeah. them as like the enemy, and I want them to go no, down. No, it's yeah. you know, I respect them, and I, I like what they do. And I always thought that's ridiculous, man. If like if someone does the same thing you do you're going to be upset and you're not no, going to help them. Like, they should be on that's your team. So ridiculous, yeah. man. It's like there's so much, there's so many customers out there for yeah. everyone, right? Yeah. Um, but that's just how I look at things. And uh, this one might be, might not be easy to answer. So why don't we finish it on this unless right. you have any more questions, Dom. What is it? Um, Wild Rivers Woodworking wants to know, what would be your advice for the younger woodworkers just starting out? Thanks. Now, mind you, that might not be an easy one to answer, but let's pick three or four good points. Like, what do people have to watch out for as younger woodworkers just starting out? I think if you're just starting out, you should focus. I think you should focus equally on the woodworking. As if you, if you want it to be a business, if you want it to be a hobby, 
I don't have a ton of advice because I don't have the experience there, but if you want it to turn it into a business and you make money, I would say spend half your time on like creating products and like experimenting and learning in the shop and the other half figuring out how to market. So how to sell your product, how to create content for social, how to, how to get your name out there because I find a lot of woodworkers, they're, they're really good at making. They make the most beautiful things in the world, yeah. but they don't have the means of getting it out there and they, they're not successful because of it. And I think you need to spend a lot of time on the marketing side and learn how to make a video, learn how to edit a video, learn how to post a video you know, efficiently and be active on more than one social media right. platform. And if you're, if you're gonna do it seriously, like you need to have a website so there's, there's less resistance for your customer to make a purchase. If there's been times I've seen a product from a smaller maker and they're like DM to purchase. I'm like, I'm not gonna DM to be like, hey, how much is this? Oh, what size? Like, no, I want a, like a website. Obviously not everything can be sold on a website, but there should be info on a website. So my only last question is like, I wanna order that, here's my credit card info. It shouldn't be like this long messaging back and forth, working out sizes and so details. So make it easy. Yeah, remove all the barriers of resistance for the customer. So. Yeah, spend half your time working in the shop, half the time marketing it, and part of the marketing would be make it easy for your customers. Money follows the path of least resistance. So make it as easy as possible for them to give you money. If they're unsure about a detail, they're not gonna give you money. If they're unsure about how much it's gonna cost, they're not gonna give you money. If they're unsure about when they're gonna get it, they're not gonna give you money. So make it clear and easy for, for you to relay all the info to the, the end user, the customer. Yeah, yeah, that makes total sense. Now that's that's approaching that question from like the business side of things um from a hobby side of things maybe i can touch on that a little mm -hmm. because that's kind of what i i run the stump shop as a small business but it's also a little bit of a hobby mm -hmm. because of my full-time job but to answer um wild rivers woodworking my advice for the younger woodworker to be honest would be um it's kind of falls in line with the way you operated jeff in, but instead of like, you know, I needed to expand my workshop or I needed to, to um, you know, buy more tools, like, like huge tools, like that hockey rink size CNC. <laughs> I think as a hobbyist starting out, or especially for a younger woodworker, I think people get so caught up on, I need everything now, mm. like immediately. Like, okay, so I'm gonna start <clears throat> being a woodworker, but I want my shop to have everything in it, right? right have away. $100,000 right? worth of tools. Uh, like, Cause I, I show my garage a lot in my stories and, and, and videos. And I get a lot of questions going like, hey, all those things in your background, like how much do you think you put into or something? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know because so you know what I did? By a little bit, exactly. by a little bit. So my advice for, for younger woodworkers starting out is if, first of all, if you're doing it as a business and someone wants a table, but you don't have a sander, okay, buy a sander. You've, you're now $100 into your business. If that sander is enough for you to finish that table and you sell that table for 300 bucks, you're now $200 up. Take that and save it until yeah. you need, like you don't need to immediately go and buy go a buy CNC. The cool, or, you yeah. don't need it. Wait until there's a project for it. the tool. Even myself now, I'm at that point now where I almost have every tool that exists because of, you know, I've been lucky over the years, whether it's a sponsor or brand deals or just I went and bought it only if I needed it. Yeah. Dom and I, we share tools all the time. Like, hey, do you have it's this? Economical. Do you have that? Yeah, I can. I don't need to go and buy my own because I know I'm going to use it once in mm -hmm. the next two years. And then if you find you're using it a few times, then you can justify the purchase. Yeah. And then you can buy it. You know, maybe price it into a job and, and make it work. There you go. So that's my, my advice to young woodworkers is start. You don't need everything. Nope. Like I, I leveled my first stump ever with a hand saw and it took me <laughs> forever before I realized, you know what I need is a chainsaw. Right? Yeah. Like Popeye when, yeah. he was, <laughs> when he was, I remember I was at the side of my dad's house and, and I go, you hold there, I'll oh, use the, man. like it took forever. That sounds horrible. And guess what, it ended up being level and it ended up being one of my nicest stumps ever. You know what, I give you credit for continuing down this road <laughs> after, after that, doing that. that would I would have been done, I yeah. would have been out. I'm never working on point. another stump again. I'm changing my name and everything. Um, but Dom, you also, you know, whatever advice you have for a yeah, younger woodworker. Yeah, no, that's, woodworker. Uh, that, that's really good advice. I mean, you can't go, I mean, we're doing well, I mean, relatively well Air now, but. Well. Uh, you know, even me, when I, I kind of jumped into this, you know, full time right from the get go. 
and the beginning is tough. It's hard. Like when you don't have that other income coming in, it's tough. So that's really good advice. You can't go out and just buy every tool. You can get a lot done with a little bit of creativity and the right, you know, to be tools. resourceful. If you got a buddy with a tool or maybe exactly. you outsource it to like a shop, yeah. if you need some CNC planning yeah. and you pay them, you know, their exactly. hourly rate but for an hour. And yeah. so it, it, you know what, at, at the end of the day, it's, too. I think the best advice I could give is you have to enjoy what you're doing and you have mm. to be doing it for it's great if you want to do it because you want to you say i want this to be my career and i want this to be the way i make money but you can't do it because it's trendy or because you think right. it's you know it's going to be the easiest way it's going to be the big if, money maker if it's you don't like it it's not going to work for you you gotta have a yeah. genuine so, interest exactly yeah. Yeah. Burn so it has to be i mean for me it worked that it was something i enjoyed doing as a hobby even without making any money from so that kind of, you know, as you go along, it, it helps you enjoy what you're doing every day, but it also helps you get through those slumps that you're going to hit, especially yeah. starting out. Because be if you don't like what you're doing at the best of times, how are you going to feel at the worst of times? True. That's good advice. Right? So I think that's my best advice for anybody starting out, not just in woodworking, but in, in anything industry. is, you know, go after something that you genuinely enjoy. Awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's great, man. That's a lot of good advice there. Um, I actually have one question. Why are you the only guy at this table with like eight drinks in front of you? Because <laughs> I'm just a beast. <laughs> <laughs> this is water, this is water, and this is water. Um, thanks, man. I appreciate yeah, thanks that. For we you. appreciate that. Um, that was know, fun. As soon as the opportunity came up to to come down here we hopped all over it i yeah. drove four and a half hours in traffic just to, and that's only from like 20 you know <laughs> 20 normal, minutes 20 kil it's kilometers only two and away. a half kilometers yeah, that's right yeah <laughs> toronto is an hour from yeah. toronto we all know that we'll do another one in four years absolutely yeah. man i can't wait for our 2027 episode um <laughs> i'm gonna be so, retired i'm gonna have to come out of retirement for that well yeah it's not that we, uh, we're all alive still right yeah. we're um, all good we're all good here man my final question and this is from me is when is Jeff Mack gonna have his own podcast? Ooh. And can I be your first guest? Can we be your first <laughs> guest? We're a, we're a package team here. So I, I've thought about a podcast before. It's there's only so much time in the day. All right, that's, that's enough out of this. For now, listen to the reason. For the Grand podcast. No, um, I'm just kidding. No, I, I'd like to do one eventually. Just right now, there's like so many other things that I want to get done, and podcast isn't in, in that you know top part of the list. So, what are you talking about? You don't day. seem busy at all. <sighs> <laughs> okay, just invented 12 new pigment colors during this episode. There's like 14 people back yes. there waiting to come out to build tables. <laughs> no, what, one as day. soon as we wrap up, it's, it's like 11 p.m. and you have a lineup outside of people that have been waiting. One, one day, but for now I got other So other it's not projects. out of the question. No, no, no. I would, okay. I would love to do it one day, just timing's not there right now. The timing, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, you seem pretty busy. Um, so as usual, thank you everyone for the questions. That was an awesome episode. Obviously, we thank our guest, and um, those of you still listening, tune in next week to the For the Grand podcast. Dom and I will be back with something juicy to talk about. One thing here, I'm just looking over my notes, Jeff, and I have a whole page unchecked because it's all about Instagram specifically, and I'm not going to get into that now because we've already been. Seems like we've been talking for a long time, but. Um, this kind of leads me to maybe having you back on the show. Can we do a part two? Let's do or a part, part three. two or a part three or whatever you want to call it. Let's and maybe it. we can focus strictly on um, Instagram. Because Instagram. Yeah, yeah, let's do all Instagram. All Instagram yeah, yeah. only next time because this episode was a lot about business, and which was awesome. Um, but next time maybe we'll focus strictly on Instagram because we all know that it changes so rapidly. Yeah. Um, even if we talked about something today, that will be irrelevant, irrelevant in a month yeah. from now. So I'm let's, on board. let's get back together, um, talk about Instagram only next time. And once again, to our listeners, if you enjoyed this episode, leave us a review, hop on, give us five star. That helps us huge. And you know what else helps huge? It's sharing. So when you listen to this episode, throw it in your stories that you listened. Um, and to those of you that message us saying, Thank you. This is the first time listening. We love those messages. Keep them coming. Share with your friends that are in the same industry. And if you think Jeff dropped any knowledge tonight that you can um, benefit from, then share with a friend that's in the same boat as you are. Because when we, first all when we all first started 
we all needed a helping hand, right? So we hope sure. that this podcast is that helping hand for all of you listening. And um, I'll throw it over to you guys. Anything else? You We're talk good. a lot without oh stopping to God. breathe. Right? Yeah. I think we just need to I tell can't. them to wrap it. Yeah. Wrap it all up. Right. So anyways, I just wanted to thank everyone for listening. <laughs> Are we done? I'm out. I'm, I'm sitting here alone, but I still thank all of you for listening. <laughs> All right, we're done. Yeah. Good night. I'm out. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I need my beer. So, all right, so the next episode, we're going to be talking about subscriptions on Instagram. No, I'm just kidding <laughs> you, but um, have a good night, and I guess I'll sing the outro alone. Have a good night. Thank you for listening. Cheers. Fuck. I do talk a lot. Eh? You talk a lot. Oh.